Hey guys, welcome back to another week of... I have a lot to do this week. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed and usually I'm pretty good at like figuring out my process in like the order of which things has to happen so that things can like flow smoothly instead of it being chaos around the house. But honestly, I think no matter how I cut it, it's gonna be chaos anyway. So just to give you a rundown of kind of the theme of what's going on this week, Obviously, you know over the last few months I have been purging like crazy and it feels really good to have a lot less plants. I think I've cut the collection down maybe maybe by half, honestly. Um, half of my collection is gone. It feels really great. I have more time to myself. I've been able to take care of the plants I do have a lot better than I have been before. But now that I have less plants, um, but the plants are growing, they're growing larger, I need to shift my setup again. So the main areas of focus this week are going to be the living room and the plant room. So I ordered two new shelves. I ordered one new shelf that's gonna go into my plant room and one shelf that's gonna go here and I'll show you what that looks like in a second because I just put another one up in my kitchen. My Millsville Wide is gonna now go into my husband's um, office and I'm going to set up the shelf here. The only thing is, is it's a narrow shelf, so it's not gonna quite fill up the entire wall, but I think I just need to get used to the fact that like when things go past where the Millsbow is, it's a bit hard to like maneuver between the couch going into the bedroom. So I think it's okay that it's gonna be taken in a little bit, but I'm gonna have to get used to it because I always feel like it looks so empty on that one wall. But anyway, um, I don't know whether the new shelf is gonna go right here and then shift this shelf that way, or if the new shelf is gonna go here. So I think what I'm gonna do is just remove everything from this shelf, remove the Millsbo, and kind of mess with a different setup. Obviously, I need to build the new shelf, which should be pretty easy. I've now built two of these. Um, the hardest part is just mounting it into the wall, but I also need to water today. So that's gonna be the area of focus today and hopefully I can get everything done. And then maybe by tomorrow or the next day, we can head into the plant room and I will give you the spiel of what's going down in there. So, um, first things first, I don't know why I'm thumbsing up. <laughs> first things first, we need to clear out the shelf. So um, I'm just gonna do that really quickly. All right, so here's the shelf that I got. Everyone just ignore the um, <laughs> the little caterpillar that's drying there. But um, this is the shelf that I have in my bedroom. If you guys are subscribed to my vlog channel, you'll know how much I love this shelf. It is a great size. It's so easy to assemble. It's good quality. It looks expensive, but it's only $99. And the equivalent of them, like if you shop at CB2 or Structube or Crate and Barrel, wherever, for the same dimensions, you're gonna pay like three or four times more. So for me, this was a really good deal. It comes in like four different colorways and um, I love it. And it's super easy to assemble. Did I say that? That's a definite plus. So I did move some plants um, over to this side. I have my McDowell living here now and my Glorious. And yeah, I love it. I hope that it fits well next to my shelf in my living room, but obviously we'll just have to see.
Okay, so unfortunately the wall is so dirty and dinged up because of the aerial roots that have been clinging onto the wall. I do not have a magic eraser, but um, I'm gonna try and use just a regular sponge and soap, but I wanna just talk about these things first. So this is a knockoff of the Swiffer duster. I think it's Swiffer brand. Swiffer came out with this duster thing that looks like this. It's basically a sponge that you get wet and you just like wipe away the dust and everything, fur, hair, everything sticks to this and then you just rinse it off and it slides right off. And it doesn't like kick things up like a, a regular duster and it just catches everything. So I'm gonna just be like cleaning the baseboards and stuff like that because it's really dirty. But I don't know what I'm gonna do about the stains on the wall, honestly, because I would really love to clean this wall up before I get the new shelf in but I have searched high and low for a magic eraser around the house and I cannot find one. So that's unfortunate. I told you it was easy. Um, I don't even need the instructions anymore. I am even tempted to get a second one. I was like, maybe I'll do it in the center and then to do two black shelves on the side. But I think it's just an overkill with the black shelves. The one in the kitchen, then I'm gonna have two here. It's just too much, too much. So anyway, um, here's what I was thinking. By the way, sorry for all the time lapse. Again, I'm gonna say this. Seems like the majority of the people who watch Week Of don't come for the time lapse. But then when I said that I was gonna stop doing time lapse stuff or at least limit it, I did get a lot of people who were like, wait, I love the time lapse, so I don't know what to do. But anyway, I had to time lapse all that or else we'd be here forever. My thoughts while I was building out the shelf was that 
I think this shelf would look better on this right side and then move this shelf that way. But I don't plan on putting lights on the new shelf because I don't want to damage the paint. I don't, I just don't want white bars on the black shelf. I think it's going to look crazy. So I'm going to opt to put it over here because it's going to be closer to this south facing window and it gets much more direct light um, throughout the day. So I have decided I'm going to put it here. <laughs> Not feeling like super great about the decision because I do still think it's going to look better on this side, but I have to go with what's best for the plant. And um, if I didn't have to like secure it to the wall, I'd be like, whatever, I'll just put it here for now. And then when I get tired of it, I'll switch it. But it literally has to be anchored to the wall. So it's like kind of permanent and I hate patching up holes. So I don't know. Anyway, let's, um, I'm gonna just do a little test run here and see what it looks like. Oh, I thought, I actually thought this shelf was taller. So actually, it probably actually makes more sense to put it on this side. So I'm gonna lean it this way. I don't like that my shelf comes out so much further. Like it does look very mismatchy, but at the same time, I almost feel like once the plants are in, it's not gonna matter anyway. But if I go like this, I need to like, uh, like center it to the wall-ish. It's not horrible. It's not horrible, but it's not great. Hmm. Okay, I don't like it. I don't like it um, properly at all. I will say that. I think that it has to come here. But now I'm like, do I do I get a second shelf and do two on the side? But I just think it's gonna be freaking shelf overload in this first floor. I'm in a pickle, I'm in a pickle. Just for shits and gigs, let's do it with the like the reverse. I like that so much less. I actually don't even think I'd like it if it had two black shelves on each side, or maybe I would. Here's another thing. I also don't wanna make anything too permanent. I don't wanna do two shelves on the side because there is a slight chance we're gonna have to move, like switch our whole living room around one day and mount the TV onto here. And I will be able to tell you guys why in a few weeks. I was thinking maybe I could squeeze my Rudsta tall here, but I, it's just gonna be too much. Like I actually want a larger walkway. This is what I was saying. I think I just have to get used to the way it looks um, because it's like, I'm so used to my plant shelf kind of going all the way out here. Um, but I, I do like that it's more spacious now. I think I'm just gonna do it. Um, and I will just trust the process. <laughs> trust the process and just hope that it works out because I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't, not loving it, but I, I, I think this is gonna be the best configuration. I've walked you guys through my process before in terms of how I place things on shelves. 
Um, typically I try and get the big ones in first, the trailing ones in second, and then I do everything else to work around those. So I was contemplating whether I wanted to move my tie constellation to this corner, and I honestly think that's the best place for it right now. I think it's gonna be weird if it's on this shelf. So Vince is out picking us up some McDonald's. So I'm gonna try and move this by myself. It's, it normally wouldn't be an issue, but I have a pot that's attached to it with the aerial roots that are rooting in there. So I have to basically try and carry two pots at once, but I do wanna clear the table because we need somewhere to eat and I'm starving. It's in, I know you guys can't see it, but I think after one more leaf, it's not gonna fit anymore. I don't know what the plan is gonna be. I have no clue where else I would put it in the house. Like honestly, I think I might have to move it to my plant room, but I already have my giant monster in there. So what do I do? What if I put it behind my TV? Okay, we're gonna that's a problem for another day me. Let me give you guys just a quick peek at it. Look how close she is to the ceiling. Honestly, one more leaf is all that's gonna be able to fit up there and then I'm gonna have to figure out a plan for it. I think this is the perfect time to use the word growing pains because it really is it's painful. It's painful. So before I start placing things back on, I'm just gonna quickly water everything and uh, do it like rapid fire. I'm not even slightly exaggerating when I say that like 90% of my anthurium are pushing new leaves right now. So um, this is one of them. This is the RA5 Swamp Bunny, but it's got a new leaf. I don't know if it's focused, I can't see. Um, but I'm gonna be transitioning this one out to the shelf today, as well as this one, which is pushing its first leaf in my care. This one is my Forgetti Icarla from Amanda. It was my birthday gift, if you guys don't remember. And hopefully they have no problem kind of unfurling their new leaves or expanding on the shelf. I pulled two more. Woohoo's first night is gonna be going onto the shelf too since it's just way too big for my cabinet. And then also my Diablo Ents, which probably never even needed to be in a cabinet at all. 
Okay, so this is very tentative placement because I know that eventually a lot more Ethereum are gonna have to squish onto this shelf. As of right now, um, everything has a ton of space, like lots. And now that the plants are on there, I actually feel a lot better about the shelves together. Whereas when it was bare, I was like, okay, this is not going according to plan but it's gonna be okay. I think on the right side of the shelf, I'm just gonna put Pudge's little toy basket there. And um, yeah, that'll be it. So everything is watered. I did fertilize it with TPS today. The sun is almost setting and I was gonna cut it here because I am honestly slowly falling asleep, but I do have my Millsville cabinet just sitting in the middle of my kitchen. So, um, I think what I'm gonna do, the last thing I'm gonna do today is move my Ethereum into my tent. So another thing that will be inspired by Amanda, she actually has a tent, but she never closes the door. It's basically just a shelving with walls, three walls. Um, I think I'm gonna do the same because I don't have a ton of props in there right now. And I do think that my tent closed up is gonna be way too hot for the anthurium. So I'm gonna try and squish them into the tent and uh, I'll take you guys in there with me. It's kind of a mess in my plant room right now because I'm filming another video at the same time as this one. So bear with me. Um, off camera, I actually decided to add this little guy back here. It used to be here um, a while ago. I've 
I've just changed this so many times, but I like that now it goes all the way to the end of the wall, but I'm not really compromising any space because it's so narrow. Um, and now I can even fit more plants on here. So I decided to move my um, variegated heteracium here. I moved my Hoya abovada here, my AOS mag, my Dracaena and my um, Soderini. So hopefully they're happy here, but I actually think everything kind of looks good now. Um, I wasn't really liking it when it was just the two shelves together. It just looked a little weird, but now that it looks a lot fuller, I feel like it looks more cohesive and I'm really happy with it. And hopefully I do not change things anytime soon because that was exhausting. I do just need to get a cord organizer for down here because this that is triggering me. This is it's currently going on in my plant room. So some of you guys might already know what this is because I would have posted the video earlier this month. But I took a an air clay air air dry clay class on Skillshare and I think I'm I think I'm obsessed. I think I'm obsessed with making air dry things. It's so much fun. And um, I think I can just make one for every plant and every plant's gonna have a little buddy. So I have to keep this here because I'm still in the process of filming this. I just have to wait for everything to dry. Um, but we will be in this little corner here. Before I do anything, before I do anything, I need to clean out the tent first. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. You know what I have to do? I have to pull out this whole where will I get the strength? Where will I get the strength today? <laughs> my timers have been off. I had, there was a blackout here a couple weeks ago. All of my timers reset and I haven't been able to get them to reconnect. And this timer is behind this tent. So I need to pull out the whole tent and redo the timer before I do anything. I am very, very sad. Okay. Okay, well, you know what? Just do it right. Do it right. That was a pain in my booty, but we have light. Now I have to do one, two, three, three more plugs and the whole house will be back on timers. So I've kind of cleared out some of the props, but I think that I have, I think I have too many props in here. That's where I think we need to like figure out some things. So, um, why did I do that? If you guys remember, a couple months ago, I posted about my Hoya Callistophila that was like on its last leg, it just completely shriveled up. Guys, when I tell you it was shriveled for like three months, I'm not even joking, it would not root. But we finally have roots. I don't know what the difference was. Um, it just randomly rooted one day and all of the leaves have perked back up, which I'm so freaking happy about. So I'm gonna get this into soil. I think I'm gonna not do pond this time. Um, so let's do that this week. I will put this aside. Um, I also have another project here that I have been meaning to get to. I just don't know if it's rooted enough yet. I guess I could continue the rooting process, but it's looking a little sketch can't even see it. If you guys are wondering why I have an all white elbow, this was donated to me from Lauren. Um, I wanted to test out silica. I wanted to test out to see if it really did help with white leaves. Um, and I just want to kind of document how long it stays white. So I have not been using, I have not been using silica on it yet. So the plan is for the first six months, I'm going to drag it out for a year if I can. Um, for the first six months, I'm going to not use silica on it and kind of like document um, when each of the leaves emerge and when they die off. And then after that six months, then I'll start using silica and see if it makes it last longer. So I think now that we have some water roots in here, I think I can transfer this to pond. Um, an update on my new import. So we do have a little bit of yellowing on my Twinsia, Twinsia, Twinsia velvet whatever this thing is called i have no roots yet lauren doesn't have roots on hers yet either so i'm just assuming this one is a slow rooter 
but it's still very, very firm. The stem looks nice and healthy, but I am seeing sort of like chlorotic spots on it. Like I was saying in my, um, in my video where I was working on this import, I just, yeah, I expect the import leaf to always go. That's just my expectation. It doesn't always happen, but I just expect it. And then here we have a very, very sad Gloriosum Silver. And honestly, I think I was just going to chuck this, but in Lauren's last live sale, someone did ask for a Silver Gloriosum. So maybe I'll just, I don't know. I'll chop this leaf on. I'll chop this leaf off and I'll give it maybe another month or two to start acting right or else I'm just chucking it out. This one is, I think, another Gloriosum that doesn't look like it's ever going to unfurl. It's already starting to die. So I'm going to unfurl it and see what's going on. Yeah, she is rotted. I actually don't know why. It's getting plenty of light in there. Don't know what kind of Gloriosum this is, but it's a Gloriosum. I also took this propagation. Don't know who the heck this is. If anyone has any guesses just by looking at the sinus, um, that would be appreciated. But I can't even begin to tell you like my guess. No clue. And then this is the last of my Dioscoria. Not seeing, oh, I am starting to see some roots on it now. I just have it in a dome with moss. Sorry, it's so bright. It's like way too bright back here. I'm not sure this plant is for me anymore. It's so weird to like go through these phases of like, this is like my, my favorite plant and like, you know, just kind of hyping it up and then like having it for a while and just realizing that the growth pattern is just beyond your skill level, your patience level. Me and Alice had a discussion about this the other day and we were just like, are we done with Dioscoria? I don't know. I propagated this not to sell, but to just start over as my own plant because I chopped, I, I chopped this part off the main plant and I just threw the rest away. That's how overwhelmed I was. So we'll see, I don't know. I can't even think of a place I would put the Dioscoria anyway. So I'm gonna have to think about that. Another thing I have in here is probably an elbow, another elbow, one that refuses to wake up or do anything. Um, I have my mom's import in here. It's not looking the best. This is an SP Morona. Her first pendant leaf anthurium. Hopefully it actually makes it to her alive. Um, I can see one new root that has formed, but I also see that some of the leaves are going a, a tiny bit yellow, but i um, not worried about that. My billy, my variegated billy is also in here. I chopped it into two and I'm not seeing any new roots yet, but this is the top cutting. Look at how tiny this caterpillar. <laughs> the caterpillar is, it's pathetic. And I actually chopped the bottom because it had a good amount of variegation and the stem was pretty long. So this is it. I'm just not sure if it's gonna do anything, but we'll see. I've got both of my dark phoenix stumps in here, which nothing is happening yet. I just chopped that. I chopped this Woohoo's First Night for Alice the other week. I have one random. This is quadrangularis. Oh my gosh, these fungus gnats. And then I just have a ton of glorious props from Amanda. I think I might sell two or three of them because they're such great they're great specimens. They're really, it's a, it comes from a really nice mother plant. Um, and I just think some people would love to have a piece of that. And then I just have this random Gloriosum. Why do I have so much Gloriosum in here? It's redonkulous. Okay. And then there's a whole bunch of other props. I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna even bother showing it to you guys. But what I'm gonna do is I think I'm gonna reserve the top three for props and then i will dedicate these two shelves and the entire floor to imports and my ethereum hopefully i can get everything to fit i'm just not feeling super duper confident about it because it's kind of a lot 
but I will try. I will try. Maybe I will show you my other props because I think I've done enough time lapse for today. By the way, if I seem lazy or out of breath or just off today, it's because I am. I usually have to really, really amp myself up or psych myself out <laughs> for filming the week of because it is just always such an exhausting, exhausting um, week. But um, beyond that, I've had like so many deadlines this week for work and sponsorships that like I just completely, I, I didn't manage my time well. Not really, I got sick and so I had to take time off. And so this week is kind of the week that I'm trying to catch up on everything. And of course I decided to film week of this week. So I really am just like making my life more chaotic than it needs to be. But I'm so, I'm just so tired and I'm like mentally not really here. But I'm just trying to force myself through it and hopefully I can put together a decent week of for you this week. So anyway, um, I'm gonna just start, I need to stand, I'm so lazy. I'm just gonna start placing props back. So a little update on some of my Fridex. Um, one of them is not doing well. I undomed this thing and when I tell you guys, like I've, I've spoken on this before about how like stratum is great for rooting corms, but once it's rooted and sprouted, I would honestly get it out of there if it's not gonna be in a dome because it dries out so fast and it is not forgiving at all. Like it's basically completely dead. I'm not even really sure if I should keep this one or if I should just throw it out. <sighs> like everything, like all the roots have completely dried. So I might just honestly chuck this one out. And then I have this one. It's funny because the last time I would have shown you guys my Fridex on this channel, I think, they were all white, but I've had some that pushed out like four or five white leaves and then pushed out green. So this one is showing a little bit of green, but I'm gonna hold on to this one for longer because I am not trying to sell any all white Fridex. This one is like the opposite. It has just very, very low variegation, but I think, I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna hold on to this for maybe like two or three more leaves and just see what it looks like. Because if it is a very, very low variegation fry deck, then I need the price to, re to reflect that. Um, this fry deck is looking promising now. So this is another one that went all white. Pushed out this leaf that has some green on it. And it's gonna be hard to see, but there's a new leaf here and it looks like it has equal amount of green, green and white. So it's not, it's not looking too shabby. These two are priority. So this is the red crystal port and it has two growth points on this little tiny, like the tiniest stem. I can't believe the world's tiniest little butt cut gave me two separate growth points. And then this little baby one here, which you can hardly even see is also pushing out two growth points. I don't know if it's just the specimen I have, but my red crystal port pushes out secondary growth points like it's no one's business. It pushed out one secondary growth point for me already, which I um, cut off and I sold. And now my main plant is pushing out two more growth points at the bottom, which is awesome. And now both of these stumps are doing it. So this thing just like wants to spread spread eagle and just go all over the place, which I have no problem with. Other priorities are gonna be the dark phoenixes. Maybe I'll put these down here. These ones are very exciting. So I don't know if you guys, if any of you watching this bought this hybrid from Lauren, I need to get it out of these cups. But she crossed um, my Hoff, my Hoff X with her red crystallinum. All three plants that I have have pushed out a new leaf. And why aren't you focusing? Hello? Okay, maybe not this one. This one, it looks like it's the strongest or at least the fastest growing of the three that I have. You can see that it has a bit of silver. It has a tinge of red. And I just think this is gonna be the cutest freaking hybrid ever. This one is showing way more red. I don't know if it's picking up. It has like the smallest streak of red in the, uh, the nation. Next on the priority list, let's just make sure this is alive still. Oh gosh, she's, 
Oh, she's squishy. Oh no. My queen of hearts. My queen of hearts has kicked, has kicked the bucket. I knew, I, I knew this one was on its way out because I, the last time I checked it, it had springtails on it and I was like, mm, yeah, sign of death. Um, but I think eventually I will get one from Lauren, like an actual established plant because my luck with getting them from Amanda when it gets shipped in the mail um, or getting chonks has just been awful. So sorry, Amanda. I killed another one that you sent and I just feel awful. But another one is this, let me just open it. These are dark phoenix seeds. Um, my friend Jing recently selfed her plant and she gifted me two seeds and they both have sprouted now, which is great, but they're gonna need a little bit more time in here. I think I have three politiflorums. Oh yeah, I can see the third one. So all three of them are still alive. They're not doing anything, but they're green, which means they are alive and kicking. Ooh, this one has a growth point waking up. I don't know if you guys can see right there, that little green dot. Finally, um, so that one's alive. This one is not pushing out a growth point yet, but very much still alive and very, very dry. So I need to water these. This one's actually quite wet. That's what she said. Obviously my variegated Billy will get priority on this shelf. My Heterophila Dragon's Breath. Um, two of them look like they are beginning to sprout. They are taking forever though. I'm surprised there's no roots on it yet. But I would be stoked to be able to propagate this one. Here's one that I'm really not sure about and I don't even remember propagating this. This is a white princess. Why is nothing focusing? This is a white princess. Not sure what the variegation is like but i almost wonder if it's worth keeping to just sell it so whatever it's not taking up that much space i will just keep it i have this whole thing of el choco and they're selling el chocos in the stores here for like two dollars so this is kind of uh worthless at this point but I do like to propagate some things to throw in as freebies in Lauren's purges since she lets me tag along with her and, and sort of let me sell the things that I wanna sell. And so, like I mentioned, I like to contribute as well to her, her freebies. So um, I think she's gonna be doing a live sale in another two weeks. So maybe I'll pot these ones up this week as well. And um, I can pass them off to her. Okay. So we have Ninger tents here. I think I'm gonna get these all out of this situation because it's not working. Um, I'm gonna see who's alive still, and then um, if they are alive, I'm gonna switch it to a different setup. I think I'll dedicate at least one day this week to just repotting. Maybe we can do like a mini repot and chat Q and A in this Q and or in this video. These ones are kind of exciting. This is the Stylo Chaitin. Stylo Chaitin. They're both um, pushing out growth points now, which is awesome. I'll throw in a photo of the Stylo Chaitin if you guys are wondering what the heck um, I'm talking about. I was kind of hoping that it would have new growth points by the time um, Lauren's next live sale came around, but I don't think that it's gonna grow fast enough, so this one will have to wait. Um, I'm not sure if this is alive, to be honest. This is a king of spades. I just have the worst luck propagating king of spades. I find it to be so difficult. I also find them to be hard to root. This is another name, very much alive, but not looking happy. This one is an exciting one. So this is an Alocasia venusta. I've been waiting a long time for this little corm to wake up so it's finally awake but she needs some more time in the little incubator i think once i get maybe another two leaves on it i can take it out of here <sighs> okay who else um i have an Anthurium balloenum which uh i could repot 
and I should repot. Oh my, that's good. We love, we love, we love it. We love, we love that. We enjoy that. We are very happy about it. This is exactly what I wanted to happen today. This was, this was a plan. This was planned and um, I'm okay. Well, that was fun. I loved that. Now we're going to do something kind of fun. I am gonna be filming an updated Ethereum collection video because that's been one of my number one most requested videos, which kind of surprises me because I did not think that anybody came to this channel for Ethereum since I don't know what the heck I'm doing. But I will admit I have acquired some pretty juicy, amazing Ethereum over the last few months. So um, like I said earlier, 90% of my um, Ethereum are pushing new leaves and I'm not, I'm not making it up. I'm not lying I'm gonna prove it to you. So um, you'll see them when they are emerging and uh, I'll post an updated video once everything's hardened off. So uh, my Carla uh, Bivep, another one that I got from Amanda and Alice and all my friends during my amazing birthday week. Oh, she's so, she is so Gorgina. I can't get over her. You're ruining the vibe here, dude. There, that's better. So she's looking Gorgina. Um, she just popped out of her old sheath here. You can see where the catafil was and now it's poking out. So there is something coming, something's coming and I'm so excited. So, ah. So we're gonna fit her right there. My Doriaki Red Crystal, I featured this in my uh, New Leaves November video. She is still hardening off. I'm finding that this one takes a long time to harden. Like, it's looked like this for like, what I feel, I don't know, two weeks already. And it's still like that emergent color, it's still soft. I'm not complaining though, I love it so much. This is another Amanda plant, this is my There's gonna be pawn. I mean, like all over this room. This is my Gerald Bess. It's pushing out this little guy here. It's still super, super fresh. Um, that's very, very exciting. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to fit all of them in here, to be honest. But to be honest, again, to be honest, to be honest, a lot of them are ready to move out. I'm just very hesitant. They are going to move out, but maybe once all of these leaves start um, hardening off. So this is uh, another one from Lauren. This is the Crystallina Mag for Getty Eye Lux. I think this is what she's calling the Vag Lux. I can't remember. And yes, you heard me correctly, Vag Lux. If you know, if you know, you know, and if you don't, you don't. But um, yeah, this one is kind of interesting. The edges on this new leaf is like very wavy and I don't know why. But um, a moment for this color on the emergent leaf, it's like this bronzy, beautiful color. It's like very reminiscent of the Winlingeri when it has an emergent leaf. It's so beautiful. She's had some Vag Luxes in her batches that have just been so beautiful. Like it's such a great cross. And yeah, I'm just really happy to have this one and see it finally sort of doing something and sizing up because it was it was dormant for a long time. It didn't really do anything. But yeah, we have a new leaf. Another one that I am so effing excited for. So this one is from Woohoo Tropicals. This is the Pappy Voldemort self. And oh my God, it's looking so Voldemort. Look at how long and sinister this leaf is. Look at those ears. I cannot. I am so happy to have this one. It's been doing really well. It hasn't dropped any of the leaves since acquiring it and since repotting it. I can see some new roots on the side right here. But guys, I am just patiently awaiting to see what this leaf looks like once it's fully hardened, but she looks mean. Mean, mean, mean in the best way possible. Next one is my Ralph Lynham Fort Sherman Luxurians. This is another Amanda plant. Where did my tag go? But um, you can see a new leaf has come out. This one just 
like fully hardened and emerged maybe a month ago no three weeks ago and then i repotted it and it just like immediately pushed out another leaf which is kind of exciting i am not seeing any new roots at the moment which i'm not super surprised about considering how much larger i went in terms of vessel size this used to be in a little parfait cup like two inches wide and then i sized it up to a five inch so we're going big we are going big and i'm hopeful that this one is going to get nice and large one of my favorite anthurium in my collection a hybrid between two of my best plant friends um, alice and jing so this is what we call the tofu yeti eye and i i say this all the time and they're probably so sick of me saying it but i i got such a good one i got such a good plant from that batch because it has like consistently given me the world's cutest sinus ever so this is one of the oldest ones and i was like oh my gosh i hope that this sinus stays and look at it it has it's so cute it has like i don't know how to describe it but it's very very unlike any of the anthurium i have in my collection and it's just gorgeous it's so pretty it literally took the best features from both parent plants and i just have to say that this is like one of my favorite anthurium in my entire collection it's so funny the color of this emergent leaf looks like it's dying why does it look yellow it doesn't look yellow in person it looks like a greeny a greeny color but uh yeah this one is still really soft and hardening off i can't wait i hope it gets bigger i hope it gets a lot bigger than the last leaf but look at how good the last leaf is oh my gosh I love this plant so much. I'm so, so happy it's in my collection. Next one is another um, Lauren plant. This is a cross of her Anthurium Ace of Spades green form with a Magnificum. And there are some yellowing leaves that I am going to chop off as soon as this leaf hardens. But it looks like it's going to be a decent size. It's really cute. It does look like, it looks, I think it looks more mag than Ace at this point but it does have like that really nice pink sinus, which I hope continues, but I'm um, not quite sure what this is gonna look like at the moment. This one is very exciting. This is the one lingerie that I got from Alice. This is the newest leaf on it. And look at this new leaf. It's not like a bronzy color. It's like bright pink. <laughs> I don't know why. The last leaf that came out on it was like a nice bronze color. I don't know if this is because it was getting blasted by light through grow lights and the sun but it's still very very pretty and it unfurled just fine i am starting to see obviously some size on it which is exciting but yeah i'm just happy that there's a new leaf because this thing was dormant for way too long roots look nice and healthy but i'm not going to go too in depth about each plant because i want to save that for my actual video or else it's going to become very redundant um this is the anthurium anthurium strappy velvety that i got from woohoo plants this is a new leaf that is still hardening but it looks like it's going to be like a good jump in size which is exciting because this seriously is like one of the coolest strap leaf anthurium i've ever seen another exciting one uh bessier f crossed with a lux also from Woohoo Tropicals, this new leaf looks so good. Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you guys how happy I am to be just having new leaves lately um, with no spider mites. I need to stop saying that and putting it into the universe because I think I'm jinxing it. Does it look focused to you guys or am I just going cross-eyed? All right, next one we have the Mag Crystal from Amanda. I think that this is some other kind of hybrid, which I know I keep telling you guys, but this emergent leaf is just hardening off. So red, so, so red. I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but another exciting one, um, another Woohoo Tropicals plant. This is an AOS Carla, and look how dark it is. It has the same emergent leaf color as my RA5, and I will show you the new emergent leaf color on that one once actually no that one's on my shelf but it's beauty it's gorgeous 
Alright, this shelf is full. Oh no. Another Woohoo Tropicals plant. This is a Woohoo One BVEP. So yummy. This coppery leaf. It's like a coppery orange. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh, this fungus is not. I think I got it. Who wants to bet? Place your bets. Who thinks I got it? I think I got it. I didn't get it. Um, yeah, it came with three leaves or four leaves on it. This was the leaf, the newest leaf when I acquired it. And it looks like we've got a pretty decent size, size jump here. It's so weird. I can see like Lux kind of. Looks bumpy like a Lux, but it's not. I don't want any of these emergent leaves hitting each other. Everybody keep your distance. Okay, this new leaf looks like it's, oh, not, it's not done yet. This is my Ace of Spades. This one has been struggling for the last, what, year or two that I've had it. Like, honestly, for as long as I've had this plant, it should be like flowering size already, but nope, she's like seedling size. She's a humble queen. Do I have product showcase on? What the heckers? I'm struggling today. Oh, there we go. She's cute. She's starting to look like an ace of spades. I'm excited. This one is my Maglux. I recently repotted this one and it's pushing out a new leaf. She's very thirsty. I should go grab some water. I'm losing steam here, y'all. It's like nighttime already and I have been filming since 9.30 this morning. Okay. Um, yeah, it seems to be doing just fine after the repot. There really is only a few other plants that I have left that are in no drainage. I mean, Anthurium in no drainage. The rest um, should be okay for a while. My Carib Queen is pushing a new leaf as well. VV exciting. This one is on its way out. So I mentioned maybe in the last two months about why I've been just like hacking off leaves left and right. And there's plenty of reasons why, but the exception for when I don't chop off leaves or when a new leaf is emerging, I always let whatever leaf is dying, I let it just completely die back before I remove it. My Negro Lemon GG is also, oh, hello, can I talk? Is also pushing out a new leaf. Um, I'm on the verge of not owning that plant anymore just because I don't know it hasn't been very kind to me <laughs> I've had quite a few and they've all been like very difficult for me so I'm just not I'm just not really sure that plant is for me to be honest here's one I am also very excited about this is my forgetty ix from Woohoo tropicals so when me and Alice did the harmonica challenge and I saw this leaf I was like so sure that this was some kind of red crystal hybrid and so when the tag came out that it was for Getty IX, I was stunned. I was shocked. Um, but I'm seeing other peoples who have this plant as well and I think before they branded it as for Getty I red crystal and now I'm just like so sure of it. Like look at that. If that ain't a red crystal, I don't know what is. So I think those are all of them. Actually, oh, this one has a new leaf. Look at her. This is my Zara Michelle. Um, this one was living in moss for a long time at Anna's house, and it gave me this new leaf recently. And I just think that we're gonna start to see, we're gonna start to see some size soon. And I'm very, very, um, I'm very stoked for it. Um, I only have about four more plants in my Moseo cabinet that needs to be moved over. Hello, but they will go at the bottom here don't love don't love that it's just sitting on the floor but I don't really have a choice at this point um but yeah I think I think it's gonna be good like I said I'm just gonna permanently leave this door open because I don't want it to get too hot in there and I want to just be able to keep an eye on everything and I like that I can just see everything in here now and um honestly I think once all of these in Ethereum are acclim not acclimatized, but I think once they all move out of a greenhouse, I think I'm gonna be done with tent life. I always feel some type of way when I go through these like 
phases or these transition periods especially like heavily documenting everything on youtube because it's like i can literally remember the day i got my tent and was so excited for it and had all these plans and it used to function as just like a full-on greenhouse and it has seen many seasons i think just as i evolve in this hobby and realize like my my actual goals and what i want long term for my plants i just have to roll with it so i think yeah maybe by the end of this year or maybe by next summer um this tent will be gone and all of these anthurium will be in the living room and in terms of my props i still have one shelf dedicated to my props in my plant room and i think my goal will to always just be to have only as many props as i can fit on that shelf if i can't fit anymore then i need to either get rid of props or i need to just not propagate so those are just some thoughts um i've had a extremely long day i've been filming for i've been filming for almost eight hours i've been on my feet filming building talking um and i still need to finish filming the other video i've been filming today so we're gonna cut it here for a week of but tomorrow we're gonna be back in the plant room and we are going to handle the hoya cabinet and i'm going to tell you the plan with that I'm very nervous about your guys' reaction to what I'm gonna do in here. But again, all for the bigger picture. Insert SpongeBob meme. Um, anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. <laughs> I am sleeping with my eyes open today. Yes, I am. I surely am. Um. Okay, people, here's the plan. I'm gonna go to sleep. I'm so tired. I don't know why I'm so tired today. So, um, I said I was gonna skip a day of filming because I needed to film another video, but the timing of things has not worked out. So I had to put that off. So I decided to just tackle this today instead of tomorrow. Now, what I'm about to do is very labor intensive and I don't know why I'm doing it when I am literally halfway into REM but I want to get this done because like I just I just want this done I feel like I've been like moving this freaking apartment around like crazy and I'm getting so close to where I want it to be but I, I just you know you know what it is is it's like I make a plan and then last minute i'm like ooh, but this might work better and then i change the plan and then having to change that plan means like things that i had just done need to get switched around again and it's just like this never-ending vicious cycle but anyways i'm procrastinating because i don't want to start but we're gonna be handling this today so a bit of bad or sad news some of you guys are probably going to hate this idea but the hoya cabinet will be no no more we are getting rid of the hoya cabinet mostly because i've gotten rid of so many of my hoya that i don't really have enough to fill to like justify it taking up this entire space not only that some of them are truly just like outgrowing it in general and i'm having a hard time making it look nice with its growth so what i'm gonna be doing is removing this red stuff from my um my plant room and i'm gonna just be installing i'm going to be installing a new wire shelf here this same kind of wire shelf that my big exo is on um, i just really like using these because i can at least like configure the heights as things are growing and so i figure that this new shelf area can house some of my climbers and all my hoya maybe my alocasia and yeah that's it so um sorry if some of you guys hate this idea but i just again i'm trying to think of long term i'm really trying to get my space to be set up in a way that i can accommodate for growing things of course things are always going to have to be chopped back because i just you know i live in an apartment and i really can't just be letting things grow to its fullest potential or whatever 
and that's just the sad reality oh one new leaf so um i'm gonna quickly just because i wasn't planning on doing any kind of dedicated hoya video in a while maybe not till next year so i'm gonna just do a quick little hoya update tour of who's left who made you know who survived the many rounds of purges and i think everyone that's left in here is who is going to stay permanently so one of them is my hoya clemenciorum thailand of course i could not get rid of this this is one of my favorites of all time this one has a new leaf come in which is very very exciting this is one of the few hoyas that i actually do get super um amped when a new leaf is coming so uh yeah she's she's growing slowly but surely uh no plans to chop her anytime soon i need to put things in a bin well, i guess not whatever i'll just put them over here of course my new guinea ghost is not going anywhere ever anytime soon this is another one of my pride and joys who i've really really nurtured over the last year year or two year year and a half it's been um it's been a great a great time between us two we've had a great relationship um this plant really redeemed not redeemed itself but it redeemed the good name of the hoya new guinea ghost because i did not have a great time uh the first time around with a totally different specimen um, actually, no, it would have been a cutting from the same plant, so that's not true. Um, anyway, she's a bushy, a bushy girl, and I really, I just love it. I don't, I think that there are some Hoyas that I have in my collection where I'm like, okay, I need to tame you, you're getting too much, I need to prune you back. This one is one where I'm like, you know what? If my future kid or Millie or any of my niece and nephew, they, if they like plants, this is going to be an heirloom. This is going to be one of the heirloom plants. So yeah, super duper cool growing just fine, always pushing out new leaves. I think got this one on the way and there's a few more. I saw I saw some a few days ago that were like just emerging, but it gets lost among the rubble because there's so many leaves now. And even the the backsides are really cool. It's like super super splashy and it's really fun. Uh, this one is just growing in a no drainage vessel in pond on one of Lauren's trellises which I highly recommend. They're super sturdy. Obviously, my New Guinea ghost loves it. I do wish I could sun stress it though. Um, I think I need much stronger grow lights than these 10 watt bars, even though there's two of them. Um, I probably need to like blast it under a 24 watt Manios or even a Soltec to get that like nice purple color on it. But I also really love the green, so I'm not, I'm not too pressed. Hoya Erythrina is doing just fine she's she's pushed out quite a few leaves since the last time i featured it maybe like two or three of them have come out now i yeah i i don't really see a lot of people talking about this one but i just think that this is like one of the coolest toys out there it just it checks off all the like dumpstery garbage nasty ancient features of the hoya that i love it's got these like nice rippled edges and i like that the leaves are like kind of growing compact it grows in like these bundles of three which is kind of cool uh, to not have like one leaf and then a long runner and then another one um it's nice to have this kind of growth pattern sometimes so this one's probably going to need a repot soon also my hoyas need to be watered again i think maybe next year like next spring i'll do like a huge hoya repot where i add turfus clay to it and if you guys don't know what turfus clay is, I talked about it in both of my collab videos with Amanda, aka Bunny. Um, she uses it sometimes in her soil mixture and it, it's basically just like a substrate that retains more moisture or it retains moisture for longer and it's popular in the bonsai hobby. So I might try and utilize that um, with my Hoya just so that I'm not having to water them so often because I don't know. I just, I feel like I'm kind of neglecting them a bit. The good thing about um, Hoyas are that they are more forgiving in dry periods, but I, I try to, I mean, I would like to not have them dry out if possible. Anyway, here's another Hoya clemenciorum. The other one is a different form. Like I said, that one's Thailand. This one is just like the regular Hoya clemenciorum. Both very, very beautiful in their own ways. I just love how like thick and rigid these leaves are and 
the edges of them are even like more jagged, if that makes sense. Probably needs a trellis soon. The only thing about this is the, uh, the stems are really thick. No, don't fall, please. Yeah, the stems are super thick, so it makes it kind of hard to trellis sometimes. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. who are you? Make yourself known. Wake up. Um, Hoya, no, no, wrong. Syningia leucotrica. This one, I do want to get some turfus clay into it because, I mean, it could use a larger pot, like probably a much larger pot. Um, but this one dries out way too freaking fast, which is why some of the leaves are curled. And I've noticed that with Syningia leucotrica specifically, if you let it dry out too many times, the leaves don't ever fully um, expand or furl fully unfurl again. It's kind of like, ooh, permanent damage. Oh my gosh, so much growth on this little Hoya Thompsonii. In fact, this was one of my wishlist Toyas for so long. And it doesn't have like the coolest leaf ever, but my goodness, the way that they feel is just like so magical and so nice. I do need to give this one some love. This is another one that I would love to get really like nice and bushy. So I think, um, I don't know if I wanna do the trellis method or if I want to let it trail or do the thing that I did with my, um, which plant was that? Oh, my, I think it was like a Hoya, no, not Hoya curtisii, Deschidia numularifolia or something. No, that's not right either. But where it does like the half climbing, half trailing thing. Ah. It is a freaking mess in here, dude. And these lights are giving me the ick. Oh no, it grew under my light. So I'm pretty sure this one has like freaking flat mites or something, my Hoya undulata. Oh, this thing. Look how nasty this leaf looks and this one. I don't know what that's about. It's not the first time it's happened either. I've had that on some older leaves. This one's a newer leaf that just came out. Um, I trimmed this one back a couple months ago, two months ago. I sold some of the cuttings and it's grown like all of these. <laughs> leaves since then so it's not stopping but this is like another plant that I really love and I like if I don't have to chop it back I don't want to but um unfortunately with with the space in there it's kind of impossible to just keep letting it grow so hopefully with this new shelf situation um I can let them grow a little bit more out of control but Look how good these leaves are. It's so interesting. The leaves that it came with, which are these two, came with like six leaves originally, they all fell off. They're so stiff and firm. Whereas all of the leaves that have grown in my care, I mean, they're beautiful, right? They're like, they're really nice and dark, but they're really soft. Like they don't have that stiffness like the original leaves did. I don't know. Um, this guy barely survived the repot that I gave it on camera um, because I let it dry out one week and they all just shriveled up. I honestly was about to throw it in the trash because I didn't think that it was going to bounce back. But here she is. She's fine. Um, still have some yellowing leaves. I did lose a few of the coins and um, it got a little bit bare in some areas. But uh, she's growing and um, it seems to be okay. I, I'm doubtful about how long I'll be able to keep this, honestly. I don't know why like this plant kind of scares me a little bit. It just seems like a very intimidating plant and it has been an intimidating plant since I've had it. And it's funny because it's like, it's so tiny. So tiny, but so intimidating. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know the idea of this one. I got this one from Alice. I wonder if I wrote a tag on the, on the cup. Oh, I did. Wait, what? Wait a second. I thought that one was Hoya Chicken Farm. This is not Hoya Chicken Farm. That's Hoya Chicken Farm. Okay, one of these are Hoya Chicken Farm. I'm pretty sure I got this one from Alice and I don't, I don't think it's a chicken farm. I don't know. New leaf hardening off. Uh, I almost got rid of it. I almost got rid of this plant because I was like, oh, it's just so similar to the other crusty dumpster Hoyas that I have, but then it started pushing this out and I was like, fine, fine, fine. I'll give you a chance. 
um, but I actually really really like it I like the shape of these leaves I like that they're really like long and narrow and it's a lot different than the other Hoya the other ancient dumpster Hoyas that I have I'm sorry that I don't know the ID it says Hoya chicken farm but I don't believe it because I thought this was a Hoya chicken farm but maybe it's not isn't this a Hoya chicken farm I'm gonna have to text Allison Ching again tonight I'm pretty sure they get so annoyed. I do this like every few months where I'll just like spam them with a bunch of Hoyas and be like, um, IDs please. And then I don't actually label them. I'm very annoying that way. But this leaf looks like it's gonna be really nice. It has like a nice touch of like, of that white crusty uh, splashiness. And um, I think it's gonna be a decent size. So that's pretty exciting. I'm honestly just like floored that my Hoyas have survived the neglect, the level of neglect I've given it. This one is a Hoya SP Germany. I chopped this one to absolute bits. It was a much larger plant and I sold um, all of the cuttings. I kept this one. It is rooted now. Uh, some of the leaves have gone a little like chlorotic and I don't know why. But I'm just waiting for new growth. I'm very patient. I'm going to be patient. This is still one of my favorite um, crusty dumpster Hoyas. But actually, I feel like the remaining of my plants are all categorized under the crusty dumpster Hoya category, except my Hoya New Guinea Ghost. This, what is this? My Hoya Serpents, Hoya Serpent Splash, Hoya Matilde, and Hoya, I have this other really long one in my hallway that I also don't give very much attention to. Um, this one needs to be chopped. That's it. Okay, well, I, I just crushed that. I always want to say it's a Hoya Globosa, but I know it's not. It's a Hoya... Hoya something. Uh, this is one of the Hoyas that I've had the longest. I really like it because it's super fuzzy and and cute but like this long runner guy is not giving and I don't really know if I want to trellis it I kind of wish that it would just grow like nice and bushy like this so I might just chop it here and um, propagate it and sell the cuttings and hopefully the new growth that comes out is a little bit closer to the rest of the the growth this is very embarrassing and sad, but this is what's left of my Hoya, oh my gosh, my Dicaria matagariensis. If you guys remember from my birthday, I got like a really, really big one from Jane and Alice, and it was two plants, two whole plants, and um, I killed, I nearly killed the whole thing. Luckily, I was able to save this one piece. It's grown a little bit since repotting it into here it even is pushing some leaves which is really exciting and i'm just happy to see growth um i'm just yeah so terrified that i'm gonna lose this one and i'm i'm still sort of mourning the loss of that one because it it was really nice big plants they weren't very cheap and um yeah it's it's like fun getting plants from friends but then when you have moments like that you just feel so like crappy and ugh. I hate it. Um, sort of dwindling down here. I got this Hoya, just like a Nova Ghost or something. I got this one from Lauren a while ago and it's rooted. It has rooted, but it has not like activated any growth points just yet. So I'm patiently waiting because I do think it's a, a really cool Hoya. And then just like the remaining of my Euphorbia, this is Euphorbia? My cacti collection so i have my euphorbia white ghost from anna this little dude which i am kind of thinking about getting rid of because it's not really doing anything for me this little cutie guy that i love the ugliest ugliest penis cactus you've ever seen i don't know what is going on with this what kind of like nasty fungus grossness is happening up at the tip but I hate looking at this. <laughs> and then my my booby cactus. My Hoya Saba is still in freaking moss. I need to get it out of here ASAP before I kill the whole thing. I mean, I know um, Hoyas are very forgiving in moss, but I just think that it could be growing so much better if it was in actual substrate. It's only given me one leaf since I've owned it, and I actually like this leaf more than this one. I think this size of Hoya is a bit of an overkill. <laughs> 
for growing indoors. So um, I don't know, I might separate it. I'm not really sure yet, but this is just, it's too much. So that is it for everything in my Hoya cabinet. Um, this Hoya cabinet is gonna be completely not dismantled, but I'm going to be removing all the grow lights. I'm going to strip it of everything. It needs like the most massive clean ever. I'm not going to be doing it in this video because this is just going to be going into our bedroom. So everybody say your farewells. Your farewells and... I look like a ghost. Your farewells and goodbyes to this Hoya cabinet. Um, so I'm going to ask my husband to help me get it out of here and then we're gonna start removing all of this stuff. By the way, you can't see it, but it's sitting on top of a table and I keep all of like my big bins of substrates in here. So I think I'm still gonna try and build out the shelf so that I can house my, oh my gosh, stop doing that. So I can house my substrates because I don't really necessarily, I don't really necessarily need substrate. I think it's because my hair, like it's getting the blackness of my hair. See, I gotcha. Um, yeah, I don't really need plants all the way at the bottom. So anyway, God, this lighting is, this lighting is awful. Okay, let me get it out of here and then I will um, bring the new shelf in. I know you guys can't see the whole shelf, but I'm gonna need to get some lights on here and on here. These arenas are just slightly larger than the shelf, unfortunately. I could also go from the top, which kind of sucks booty. Um, I could also go diagonal like this and do two. Okay, so the light situation is um, triggering me a little bit because it's literally like an inch too wide for this shelf size. So I think eventually, not anytime soon because it is not a priority. I do not wanna be spending any more money than I already have in the last few weeks. Um, I'm gonna opt for the Barina bars that are half this size and that way they'll be able to fit. I can probably even do it this way, but um, we have light, which is good. That is all we needed. Now I just need to get one more up here, but I kind of wanted to do a Monios because it's, it's stronger. And I was thinking I could just do it like this. I just don't know if the Barinas will connect to the Monios, but I can try. Amazing. And that way I can just go like this and not have to worry about it. I can probably even do it on the outside. Wait, what did I do? Oh, here. Okay, let's just get these up. Let's work on the top shelf first. I'm going to be moving some plants over from over there. 
The lighting is so crappy right now because this is brighter than my ring light, but my Cupria is going to be one that lives on here if it'll fit, hopefully. And then, um, actually, maybe my scalp room can go up here too. I think my mites are done at this point, so I'm just going to remove all of them. I love having mites and it's helped my spider mite situation a lot, but I hate looking at them. I have a serpent that is not looking great right now, so I think I'm gonna put it on the bottom. One of my Philodendron SP Columbia slash El Guapo, whatever we are calling them. And then my Amanda Hybrid will go on the bottom. My UPI, which just pushed out this cute new leaf can go up here and then summer glory maybe here kind of want to elevate my el guapo a little bit alocasia nycteris um i'll just put it down here my super ugly mellow i actually have two of them and I plan to combine my pots once this one starts acting right. And then I have a Gloriosum, this little guy. Alocasia heterophil heterophila, dragon's breath, looking real pathetic. Whoa, I got dizzy fast. Okay, and I think that's all I'm gonna try and squeeze into here. Um, I'm not sure who I'm putting at the top just yet. I kind of have an idea, but I'm not quite ready to put anyone up here. Um, but let's start placing my Hoyas. I don't quite need this bottom shelf anymore for props because obviously my tent functions as my propagation area now. So I think I'm gonna use it for, I've got like little bins like this of substrates that I have little bins of substrates that I need to make space for. So I think I'm just gonna house it here. And I don't need this light anymore. Oh, but it's, yeah, I don't need it anymore. Okay, at least I have space now for my like miscellaneous substrates. Um, but we're gonna start placing some Hoyas. I need to clean this because it's so nasty. Place my big boys first and hopefully it fits. Hoya Nukin Ghost. So this is kind of temporary placement for now because I need to still repot my Hoya Sabah and my Hoya Calistophila and both of those are quite large. It's so weird seeing my Hoyas outside of a greenhouse. I've never actually grown them outside of a greenhouse before. Not that I like felt like I needed to, it's just, it always, to me, kind of made sense aesthetically to have them inside of an enclosed space just for styling reasons. But now that I have so little, this just makes a lot more sense. And I think I could probably even get away with putting one more light down here so that the, you know, some things maybe can sun stress, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. I'm trying to do, the bare minimum tonight because I am not joking when I say I am exhausted. This is so ugly, I think I'm gonna get rid of it. It brings me no joy and it just grows so weird. Like obviously I might have better luck growing like the, like the offshoot that whatever comes from this, but I just hate looking at it in the meantime. It's like, it's, ugh. I think eventually I'll move um, some of my cacti into the windowsill. It's just a little bit too cold right now, I think, to have them there. But maybe in the summer, I'll figure out a, a setup for them. All right, so there's three more that have to fit, so things are gonna have to squish eventually, but um, it's looking okay now. I know the light kind of sucks. I'm just like not, <laughs> I'm not a good filmer right now. I'm just not really in the mood to film. I really did force myself to be here tonight and I'm sorry if it showed, but I am just like, I'm just having a day. So um, I was gonna film the cleanup because it is 
freaking messy in here like I can barely move but I would love to turn my camera off so um, I think I'm gonna take a day off from day wait I think I'm gonna take a day off from week of tomorrow not that it makes any difference to you because you're gonna see me in a second anyway but um, I will see you on Thursday 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 Alright, hello guys, welcome back to week of. It is Thursday. It is I Thursday. Took a day off filming yesterday because I was dreadfully tired and had the worst day ever. You did? I was just in a really bad mood. Oh. I'll tell you why. But okay. anyway, um we are here at North Shore. We come here once a week to help out Lauren. Um I'm not gonna be filming a ton here. Just because, like, we do have a lot to do today, and but, we're leaving. Early. But if that is Jesse's car, that means the woohoo plants are here. <gasps> plants. Maybe I'll show you plants. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna show you little snippets of this and that, but I'm not gonna really be like filming a whole lot. Just kind of show you like what we're doing today, some new things around the shop. But um, yeah, that's gonna be it. And then tonight, after. Uh, work i guess if i have energy i'm gonna try and film a repot and chat in this in this week of because i have i have so many plants that i need to repot yeah, yeah. are you going do you need big pots are you going no they're too? they're all small they're oh all small. okay so anyway yeah we're gonna we're going to go inside now and hopefully jesse is here yeah Jessie, Jessie. i hope there's new plants like i that. know i exist look this is jesse this is his I know hand I said when, this is jesse's when I hand oh. he's a real guy he's a real person <laughs> and this is his hand holding a wendy is that yours oh, yeah oh so cute and this is his hand holding <laughs> She's wearing Mr. Gordon. Uh, fun fact, she named him. Mr. Gordon is Mr. Gordon. I, I had to um, <laughs> Google really quickly, like, is a pumpkin a gourd? Because I would look like, no. Oh, and yeah. Then, like, the first hit was like, technically it is a gourd. And a squash. Okay. And, and a fruit. My Hoff ex lives here permanently now, I think. Oh, is this the new leaf that just came out? Yeah. Oh, it's so cute. We did a thing again. She's expecting. Oh, it's so, so cute. Yeah. Um, it's like I'm so pretty sure too. this was a no ID something too. Wow. Love the no IDs. I know. Uh, Nope. What? Happy Meg. Meg. Bess. Look at that. This says Carla too. She's screaming Carla. Hot Meg And this is a Bess Lux. This thing is so cool. Red Crystal Lux. Who's that? Oh, SAG. Oh, I love it. Look at the hardwood leaf color. It looks so frosty. Oh, we have to separate those for you. What does this one say? Red Crystal Lux. Oh, Red Crystal Lux. Awesome. It's There's crazy how strong the Lux jeans are. It's like Red Crystal Lux. Yeah. This one? What is this? Red Crystal Lux. Oh, okay. Oh, another one. <gasps> oh my god. Oh no. I'll do it. I, I fix it. I fix it. <laughs> You guys might be able to hear some background noise, but haven't been um, able to film that much because I'm working on a lot of like rehab things. And I don't really want to show that on camera, but um, I am going to be doing something today that may hurt some people, but it must be done. 
She has two Jose Buanos in the shop that have just gotten way too big and it's just too big to ship and nobody is really like wanting to buy it locally. So, um, and some of the bottom leaves are like not looking the greatest. So what I'm gonna be do is, what I'm gonna be doing is chopping off the top and then I'm gonna node the rest of the bottom. So where did my scissor go? Oh. So here is the top cutting. I don't know if she's gonna wanna keep all three of these leaves or if she's just gonna wanna do one leaf, but the rest of them are gonna be chopped. Can I see what I'm doing? Kind of. Sorry, I didn't bring my tripod or anything and I'm just filming on my camera, so this thing is sticky. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Here's the chonkaroni. Got a second one. Ugh. Raise it up so you guys can see it. I literally didn't even change. I'm wearing my pajamas today. I started going in my closet and like pulling something to wear and I was like, hmm, no. Not today. Not today. Okay, so two plants. We have a top cutting here. Not the nicest top cut. It looks like the newest leaf on it doesn't have a ton of irrigation, but you never know with Jose's. They're very unpredictable. Um, I already know she's going to want to remove that big annoying leaf. Top cutting. And then, um, honestly, I'm probably going to have to get it out of here to uncover the whole stem so that I can take as many props as possible. But I don't wanna I don't wanna film back there because I don't want everyone to have to be quiet and stuff. So this is probably the last you'll see of me today. And um, I'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, I'm back. So I had to take a day off filming because <laughs> I've been editing this video as I've been filming and oh my gosh, the energy levels was not it. I could see myself like slowly dwindling away. So I needed to catch up on sleep and I did just that. Um, yesterday I took a fat nap during the day, slept full nine hours at night. Now I'm good, I'm good to go. So I will redeem myself for the uh, the bore that I've been all week. So thanks for putting up with me if you've made it this far into week of. Right now, uh, week of is about an hour and a half long. I usually aim for three hours for my week of videos. That's kind of like my happy number. So I thought I would integrate a little repot and Q&A, repot Q&A into this week of since I had some repotting I needed to do anyway. But out of curiosity, I would love to know what, like for the people who are here um, watching Week Ofs every month, like what is your, what is your happy number? Some people have told me, and you guys are insane, you're like, don't even edit it, just put in all the raw footage, we want like eight hours. You guys, can you, no, <laughs> no. You don't want to see what happens in the cuts, trust me. So yeah, I just kind of want to know like realistically, like what is your happy week of hour amount is it like an hour and a half two hours three hours i've even done a four hour one that one was way too long i will not do that again um but generally i try and stay around the three hour mark i feel like that's a good number for people who um sort of rely on this video every month to tackle house stuff and plant chores repot together stuff like that Anywho, um, I'm just mixing a batch of soil here because most of the stuff I'm repotting today is going to go into soil. And normally in a repot and chat, I would show you the roster, but we're not doing that today. I'm just going to kind of take you along as I go, kind of show you um, as I repot them, like why they're being repot and stuff like that. But 
Anywho, I have, um, as usual, opened up my questions to, um, opened up my Instagram stories to questions, and I said that it could be planty or personal. I got mostly plant questions, but I got enough personal questions to sort of like weave them together. So I think what I'll do is like answer a plant question, then answer a personal question, and just flip flop back and forth. So this soil mix is looking pretty good. Um, I don't think I need to add anything. I've, I'm a broken record. It's just um, soil, cocoa, husk, shreds. <laughs> Like I, I showed it in um, I think my last my last collab with Amanda with Bunny that like cocoa husk shredded cocoa husk stuff I'm using right now. So there's that fur bark, uh, perlite not coarse perlite, worm castings, biochar. That's pretty much it. If I were repotting anthuriums today, um, there would be a little bit of tree fern fiber mixed in here, but I'm really not using tree fern fiber for anything other than my anthurium. So nice having my cart right next to me while I'm repotting. So let's see who I should do first. I just have a whole slew of plants that need to be repotted for different reasons, but I think I'm gonna grab this one first since it's the easiest one. And that is the Hoya Callistophila I showed you the other day. And I'm really just repotting it basically into the same vessel that it's in, um, just in soil. And I think I'll be I'll be sprinkling some TPS billions onto the roots as well as inoculating uh, through water as well. Double inoculation. Okay, so let's get started on these questions. Is it crazy that I even want a third one of these tables? One for my plants, one for working, and one for substrates. Okay, I guess I can just put these on the floor for now. All right, I think we're good. I'm gonna stick my substrate over here so it's kind of out of the way. And then stick that there. I'm, got, I'm in a little like cubicle here. It's a little claustrophobic, but it's okay. <laughs> so um, yeah, like I said, gonna be inoculating with TPS billions today. If you're wondering the reason why I choose between TPS or using Great White, it's honestly just whatever mood I'm in, whatever I feel like using that day. This Florida beauty, it keeps poking my head. Okay, all right, we're good. Okay, we're good. Why do I feel so overwhelmed today? Like I can't wrap my mind around what's supposed to happen. Um, so I've left it on the trellis that it was on originally because I was like, I don't want to have to deal with re-trellising it. I already liked the way that it looked. So I'm glad that I left it. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna basically plop it into the new, um, the new substrate and hopefully these water roots take to soil. It's always a hit or miss, but you know, we make it work. I'm wondering if I wanna do some LECA down at the bottom. So we're gonna start with a plant question and it is what's a good humidity level for a greenhouse? I would say that it really just depends on what you're growing inside of them. Um, right now in all of my greenhouses, I basically only have philodendron, epipremnum, alocasia, and like other different varieties. Like I have like a random begonia, but I'm gonna say it's leaning more towards like the philodendron. And my ideal humidity for my greenhouses are for philodendron, anywhere from 65 to 70. I know some people say that like they want their uh, humidity levels like as high as possible like in the 90s to 100 and to me it's just a it's just a little bit of an overkill like yes there are plants that like will probably thrive in 100% humidity and it like looks nice when it's all like foggy in there but to me it's just too much like there's no reason why a plant would need 100% humidity all the time it's just yeah again like an overkill for me I'm struggling with this because Oh, I guess I, it's like, how did I have this potted before? These two leaves down here are like in the way. Would you guys hate me if I just ripped these leaves off? Like, do you guys see how um, the roots are so close to those two leaves? And like when I pot it, it like gives me the ick. So I'm going to rip them off and I'm so sorry if this hurts you. Just don't look everybody, just close your eyes. 
Here comes the sap. Here she comes. But that's so much better. Okay, so see now I can actually stick the trellis in there with the roots. And um, it's totally fine. I really could even pluck this guy off too, but I kind of feel like I should just leave him. So yeah, like I said, 65 to 70% is my happy number. I feel like it, in that humidity level, it helps, sorry, losing my voice still. Um, it helps the leaves unfurl without getting stuck. It keeps the moss poles damper for longer periods of time, but isn't like so humid that you start to see like fungal spots and things like that. Like to me that it just like everything grows so well in, in that number around that range. And I personally just don't see the need to have it more humid than that. And then in terms of growing, uh, anthurium in greenhouses my I personally did not have a lot of success or luck growing in high humidity um, which is why I'm growing them outside of a greenhouse now because I just kept dealing with fungal things and it was a pain in my butt when I was growing anthurium in greenhouses I think the uh, humidity really fluctuated between like 65 and like 80 to 90 like just depending how many plants I had in there at once and like how often I was spraying and things like that but yeah I just I'm not the person to talk to if you're looking for advice in terms of growing anthurium in a greenhouse that's not my uh not my forte not good at it no experience in it or with it and I don't really have much to contribute, unfortunately. Can be done though. I'm not saying that that's gonna be the case with everybody. Obviously airflow is a massive con uh, contributing factor to avoiding fungal issues and uh, being proactive with your like fungal sprays. So yeah, that's really all I have to say about that. I hope that helped. Um, now we're going to switch to a personal question. Uh, it said, it's not a question, but I love your cute sweaters that you've been wearing lately. <laughs> so fun fact, thank you by the way. Fun fact, um, like when I first started YouTube and even like before that, I will say all the way up to like my teenage years and even maybe before that, I wasn't very like adventurous with my clothes, I would say. Like I feel like I just kind of tried to wear what was like trendy so that I fit in and didn't like stand out too much and I just wanted to be normal and then you know towards like my young adult life I gravitated towards just like the plain black and white neutral colors and just very basic didn't really want to wear anything super fancy or whatever and certainly did not like wearing any kind of bright colors and i don't know why or what it was i mean i kind of have a hunch and some of you guys might roll your eyes at this but like over the last i will say like two years i've been doing so much work with therapy and healing and um kind of like confronting traumas and stuff and it's been like such a I can't even begin to describe to you like how much my life has changed over the last two years. And I kind of feel like in that process, I've sort of just like released the person I was before where I kind of just felt like I had to be invisible almost. And just like, I didn't want anyone to have anything bad to say about me. I never wanted anyone to be like, oh, look what she's wearing and like, look at her hair. I don't know, just like I, I cared so much about what people thought of me and I cared so much about like my image and now I kind of just like, I wear what makes me feel good. I wear what makes me happy. I'm like experimenting more with color and glitter and I always attribute it to like, I'm in my healing my inner child era and I know that kind of sounds cliche and kind of dumb but it's true and it's the only reason that I feel I feel like I've been comfortable wearing all these like really out of the ordinary things that I never would have worn before so yeah and by the way if you're wondering where I get them I want to say 98% of my closet is thrifted I very very rarely 
shop at stores. I thrift almost everything. And so a lot of the cute sweaters I've been finding are either vintage or unfortunately, I said unfortunately, because they're from places like Shein, like fast fashion brands. But you know, I'm buying it secondhand, not that it really makes it that much better, but that's the tea if you're wondering. So Hoya Clostophila is repotted. Oh, I forgot to inoculate it. See, this is what happens when I talk. I just, I can't do two things at once. So I'll just inoculate this one when I water it later. Ow. But uh, yeah, she's done. She looks, she looks pretty A-OK. -okay. Next guy up, we're gonna work on this very, very sticky UPI. It just needs a bigger pot, it needs a pole, and it needs a wipe down. So I'm gonna start with the wipe down because if I don't, I'm gonna get very, very sticky. So I have my little mixture here. A nice thing about using this um, spider mite mixture, which is the Dr. Woods peppermint and tea tree oil castile soap plus 99% alcohol. Um, I literally use this for everything. I use it to clean my leaves. I use it as um, spider mite treatment, spider mite prevention. I use it to clean my like area after I'm done filming and repotting. It's sort of like become an all-purpose spray, which is kind of cool. And I like that it's, you know, um, natural and I'm not having to like really load up on these like really chemical heavy pesticides that I've been using historically over the years. Cause every time I use one of those sprays, I have to like mask up and the whole bathroom smells like chemicals for like an entire day. This is a very EFN heavy plant. Every time I touch this plant, I get so sticky and not in a sexy way. All things EXO please, which is your favorite and best ways to keep humidity from escaping? Okay, so my favorite EXO size, if you guys don't know what an EXO is, I get this question all the time. An EXO is a reptile tank. The EXO is short for Exoterra. It's like the brand of reptile tank. And um, it's these behind me. So you can see the big one here. This one has no doors though. And then there's the one next to it so this one here is my favorite size this one is a 36 tall 24 inch wide and 18 inches deep i believe that most exoterras are the light is going weird um i believe all exoterras to my knowledge are 18 inches deep um but yeah this is my favorite size just because i feel like it's the most versatile i feel like it's the easiest to it's the easiest to style when you have plants that are small and growing and it just to me it looks the best and if you like don't have a plant room and you want a greenhouse to incorporate somewhere in your in your house i feel like this size makes the most sense because it kind of looks like a display piece almost um if you style it right of course so yeah that is my favorite size and then in terms of the build of the exoterras so it's gonna be hard to see here, but uh, these little things right here, can, I don't know if you can see it, but they're little breathing holes. Um, so what I've done, um, and this is obviously when it still had doors, I just sealed it with tape to not allow air to, to come in and out of it. And then on the top, it comes with a mesh top. Um, so it's not sealed at all. Uh, my recommendation would be to wrap the entire lid with saran wrap or some kind of plastic to trap in that humidity or even better if you can find some kind of used glass to cover the top completely so that you know um, the humidity can't escape from it that's ideal um, it was a really big thing at least here locally in Vancouver to do like the plexiglass like acrylic tops and I did have one made for one of my EXOs and it was really cool at first and like aesthetically pleasing to look at, you know, it did hold in the humidity, but it like with the lights on top of it, the heat from the lights, it made it warp. After a while, it was just like completely like bent in. So my, my preference is glass. If you can find some glass to, to cover the top of it. That's what I'm doing with both of mine right now. And um, on this EXO, the glass uh, is not covering the entire top. So there are like 
four corners that are like open and I could seal it up but I really I don't really feel the need to the sort of ambient humidity in there is around 55 which is honestly good enough for me good enough for the plants I can raise it a bit if I'm spraying constantly which I don't so that's why I'm not telling you that the ambient humidity is that high it's actually quite low sometimes and yeah that's it so but I do I do love using exos I think no matter how much changes in my space I think I will always have at least one exo in my house just because um, it's good for acclimatizing. I've used it for imports. And especially if you're trying to get a climbing plant going, Exos are perfect because you can just spray freely in there. You don't have to worry about water runoff and things getting stained. It's all glass. Um, you can get as messy as you want. And I feel like every single climbing plant in my house that has reached like a good maturity level has lived in the exo at one point and i have constantly been able to allow it to no said that wrong i've been able to let it climb a pole constantly or consistently because of the exo and because i can just spray in there freely and it just like clings on to that um to that pole a lot more than it would like if it was sitting out here on a shelf somewhere. Obviously there are ways to keep your poles wet if it's not in an enclosed space, but it's just that much harder, you know, like overspray on walls and staining walls or having to like lug it to the bathroom. But that's why like now my logic is to just keep the climbing plants that I really, really, really love because Pretty much any climbing plant you see in my house right now, I don't mind putting in the effort to like lug it to the bathroom if I have to. Like my Glorious is getting pretty big and that baby takes its <laughs> weekly shower. It's its pole fertilized, leaves cleaned. It kind of felt like a chore before when I had way too many plants. But now that um, I have so much less, I'm like, I'm good. I'm golden. I have not all the time in the world, but I definitely have more time now to care for plants like that that need a little bit more attention to grow larger indoors. So yeah, it's become less of a less of a chore, I guess. Okay, um personal question. Someone asked, "What surgery does Pudge need?" So a while back, um we took Pudge in for a checkup with our vet and he did you know a dental inspection because he's never had his teeth cleaned before and he found that he had a cracked tooth he was like well you know if you don't remove it now it's not like life or death or whatever but like dental like a cracked tooth can lead to a lot more serious things if it gets infected or whatever so obviously i'm not taking that risk and i wanted to do the surgery well, I say surgery because he has to go under anesthesia, but it's just an extraction. So we got a quote from our vet and holy smokes, knocked the wind out of me. That just absolutely exploded every, every which way. I was not expecting that. Oh, fungus gnat. <laughs> and yeah, it kind of knocked our socks off and I was not expecting that. It was well over two grand because there's like a bunch of testing that they have to do just to make sure that like he's gonna be okay under anesthesia. So I was like, okay, well, I'd rather get a second opinion somewhere else just to make sure we're not getting ripped because this is like a smaller vet's office and their prices tend tended to be a lot higher than other places we've been to. But the reason that I really like this vet is because the vet has <laughs> the vet has experience with do uh, dogs like Pudge, flat-faced dogs, and he is pro raw. And if you guys are feeding raw food, you guys might know how hard it is to find a vet that isn't going to tell you that raw food is going to kill your dog, who's not trying to push like the Science Hill diet on you. And um, yeah, so he's pro raw and that was like a huge thing for me because I finally felt like there was a vet who just understood why I've chosen this route with Pudge. Yeah, so that's why we went to him. 
but we got a second opinion at another place and it did come out to be cheaper so we decided to go with them but it was weird because when we had him assessed at this place they're like we don't even see a cracked tooth and i was like that's weird um because when he showed me the cracked tooth the other vet when he showed me the cracked tooth i honestly didn't even really know what i was looking at just kind of looked like a tooth to me <laughs> Um, but he did say there was like quite a bit of tartar buildup on that tooth. And so maybe it's just like covered now. So basically what we've decided to do is get Pudge's first dental cleaning. And then the vet said that if once they remove all the tartar, they do uncover a cracked tooth, then at that point they'll remove it. So we don't even really know if he's going to be having an extraction done. We won't know till the day of the... The cleaning but yeah it's really freaking expensive to have your dog's teeth cleaned we're still out a little less than two grand um actually it's probably going to be like just about at two grand after everything is all said and done but you know it's necessary and pudge is six he's never had his teeth cleaned before i don't know how often you're actually supposed to have your dog's teeth cleaned I think I heard someone say you're supposed to do it like every year, but there is no freaking way in hell I would put Pudge under anesthesia once a year. I will admit though, we take really, really good care of Pudge, like freakishly good. He is our child, but we are so bad with his teeth cleaning and like using a toothbrush to clean his teeth because he hates it. He hates it so much. And it's just like this chore where we end up like wrestling him and it's just a nightmare and so we've just gotten so used to not doing it which is kind of bad but trust me this whole thing has been a wake-up call where we're like we're gonna take care of pudge's teeth because this bill this bill is redonkulous that's like rent money you know for a month almost so anywho nothing serious luckily we've been grateful um that pudge has had really good health over the last few years, like besides sort of the things that pugs are predisposed to. Um, but in terms of everything else, like he's never had any major issues. He's actually quite healthy. This plant is still so sticky. I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this. Okay, I'm not gonna forget to inoculate, but now my fingers have goop on them. Okay, maybe I can answer one more question before I wash my hands. Oh, 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 here is one. Okay, and I do have some notes. So it is, how do you keep Anthurium compact without growing long petioles like a helicopter? So I'm obviously not gonna be like the person you go to for like all your Anthurium care because I'm still learning, but I will say that I have made some observations over the years with Anthurium um, because I do value growing plants in an aesthetically pleasing way just as much as I value like their actual health and that's i've you know talked about this in the past that like my plants are not just a hobby but it really is something that i see as like a decorative aspect to my apartment and so having it look nice is a huge thing it and it's almost like a deal breaker when deciding who gets to come home with me who gets to stay if you're not cooperating i have to do a poll i forgot i'm doing a poll uh what i have observed is that anthurium don't a lot of the anthurium at least the ones that i've come across they don't appreciate really harsh bright light like i would never put one like directly under like a sansi bulb or a like a soltec i've really loved using these 10 watt barinas with them because I, I feel like i have better control over the light situation with them like if it's not bright enough i can always add another bar i can add another bar at a different angle if you can keep your lights at a closer range but at like a lower wattage i find that it keeps the petioles pretty short otherwise they do tend to stretch for light it's very similar to any other plant out there philodendron alocasia monsteras you know if it doesn't have like the ideal conditions or even I hate when that happens um or even like subpar conditions i guess you can say it will find somewhere that it'll get better conditions there if you think about anthurium that grow 
in the rainforest. There's not many that really just like take over the floor like ground cover. Anthuriums are plants that more so grow like on the canopies or like on the sides of trees and stuff because you know they're understory plants and they're not getting any direct light which they don't like anyway but they you know they still they still require some light to a certain extent they will reach for it either by growing toward the light like climbing the trees and um growing towards the light or stretching its petioles to like find that little piece of light that comes through the canopy. So you have to think of it in those terms, but I'm also convinced that there are plants out there where it's like literally just in their DNA to have long petioles. Uh, some examples, in my opinion, I find the Clarinervium to be one of them. It always pushes out a petiole that's not, not always, but oftentimes it'll push out a petiole that is not equivalent to the size of the leaf. I asked Lauren and Alice for their opinions on Anthurium that in their opinion grow really long <laughs> that grow really long petioles. Alice said oh yeah like the Recavum um, but then Lauren was like well yeah, the Recavum has long petioles, but like the leaves are usually sort of equal in size to like support a leaf that big. Or the petioles are an equivalent size to the leaf because it needs to support like those really large leaves. Um, but other plants that, you know, they brought up, the Anthurium brownii, I've had a brownii. Longest petioles on planet Earth for no reason. Um, what else did they say? Oh, Lauren said the Colmanii. That one's not a very common plant. It's not talked about a lot, but I have seen hers. And yeah, super long petioles. Yeah, those are... Why am I having such a hard time with this moss pole? I usually don't have any issues assembling moss poles. I've put together so many now. So anyway, going back to the original question, um, I think, yeah, a lot of it... For, I would say, a majority of Anthurium, it just has to do with the light situation. Um, typically, if you can keep a light source close by, it won't stretch. That's just been my um, observation. But, again, I do think that there are Anthurium out there that just naturally will push the longest petioles ever, no matter what you do. Okay. Personal question. I actually got... <laughs> Um, a good amount of questions about Pudge. And it's funny, like, people always ask, like, how come you don't show them on your channel anymore? I'm just over the, uh, to answer that question. I've talked about this before, but I'm just over the, the fact that Pugs are such easy targets to the, uh, people out there that like to remind me that I am a dog abuser because I own a Pug. And you know, I've said this so many times, every freaking breed has their has their issues, their hereditary issues, genetic issues, whatever. But yeah, pugs are just pugs, Frenchies, bulldogs. All those dogs, they're just an easy target. You know, I don't really know what people expect me to do. He's here on this earth. I um, got him from a family that did not fix their dog literally bought him from someone's backyard they were not breeders and i know they're not breeders because they sold him way too freaking cheap to me which is why i went out there so fast <laughs> oh god yeah i i don't show him on this channel anymore because i am just really sick of fighting that battle and people just saying nasty things about him that really just there's not a lot that can irk me nowadays like i feel like people have said everything under the sun to me about me and um i've kind of been desensitized to it which i don't know if it's a good or bad thing but either way any kind of criticism i get on this channel i feel like i'm equipped to handle it emotionally and mentally but for some reason when it comes to pudge and i think it's just because he's my baby and i'm so protective of him um it i just can't i can't keep my mouth shut and i do get into it 
with people in the comments, I'm human, I am tempted to stoop to their level, call them names and give them a piece of my mind. So I just figure it's probably best for everyone to just not engage in, in that um, argument anymore. So anywho, um, the question was, is Pudge ever gonna get a brother or sister? And trust me, you guys, my husband and I, for years, we have been fighting the uh, the dog slash puppy itch. Wait, what was that? Oh, puppy fever. Puppy fever, yeah, we had puppy fever. There was a point where I was already like looking into different adoption places and rescue places um, for pugs and we got close. We got close a bunch of times, but um, we had a really sort of eye-opening experience this year, particularly because so many of our friends needed um, help babysitting their dogs. And so we've had, you know, a few dogs here for like a week at a time. And we thought Pudge was gonna have like the best time of his life. We're like, oh my gosh, it's like he has a sibling and he's gonna be so happy. The dude was miserable. Like, it's weird because when we see dogs out on walks and stuff, he just like wants nothing but to like say hi to them and play with them. And he loves, I think he loves the, the interaction, the short interactions. But when he comes home, he likes just like having his space. And I don't know if this is because I raised him, but I mean, that's just like me too. Like I love seeing my friends. I love seeing my family. But when I'm at home, I'm like, if it's not just me and my husband, I'm like mentally exhausted. I'm like, I just, everybody just go home, please. Love ya, but please leave. Um, and I feel like Pudge is like that too. He was like mega, mega stressed when our friend's dogs were here. Even when we have like play dates and stuff, it's really not a play date for him. Like he he's just not very interested in having other dogs in his space and we can see how stressed he gets and so that was enough for us to say like no we're not going to get another dog in his lifetime because he clearly doesn't enjoy it and if like it would make him uncomfortable then there's no point like obviously i would like really i would love to have another dog in the house particularly a pug because i am a pug girl <laughs> But yeah, it's just Pudge is, our, Pudge is our first priority and I think he's told us non-verbally that he's not into it and so that was enough for me and Vince to make our decision that he just wants to be an only child and you know what, that's fine. Not to mention freaking dog food when you're buying raw, very, very expensive and it's not like we could even fit another you know, 25 pounds of food for another dog in the fridge. Like there was just be too much, it's just too much. So I think it was like kind of a blessing in a lot of ways that Pudge showed us that we should just be a single dog household because it is nice just having it be us three and whenever Pudge needs something, whether it's medical care or anything, um, expensive supplements, toys, whatever the new gadgets are for the kids, we can afford it. And we don't really have to think twice about being able to afford it. We're just able to like take care of him. And I think if we had another dog in the mix, we would definitely be stressing about finances way more. So no, we will not be getting Pudge a sibling, unfortunately, but he has plenty of f uh, friends to play with. So like when, you know, we do want him to socialize and get out of his bubble. He has plenty, plenty of friends that we can call and have a, a quick play date with. Guys, I forgot to inoculate this one too. Let's just, no, I did. I did inoculate this one. It's hard for me to do two things at once. When I'm talking, I'm like on autopilot, whatever I'm doing with my hands. And until I really like stop and think about it, I'm like, oh, okay, this is where I am. This is what I'm doing. I think that's good. I think she's good. She's on a pole. She's got her her straps. She's all strapped in. Um, and yeah, I think I could probably fill this pole a little bit more. I really don't want to. It's so 
freaking messy. I've been anxious all day in a good way because my sister's boyfriend is proposing to her today and I could just cry. <laughs> um, I love her boyfriend. Ever since he came into our life, I'm like, please put a ring, put a ring on it. This is the one, especially after her last boyfriend. I was like, oh God, please. I want him to be my brother-in-law. So I'm just like, I'm so happy he's proposing. So anyway, yeah, I'm just waiting for a, a text from her to be like, he finally did it. Okay, next question is a plant question. Can the heterocraspidon be grown in ambient humidity? I feel like most, if not all, I could be, could be wrong here. Most, if not all philodendron can be grown in ambient humidity. If given enough time and patience and love and nurturing, um, I think I think it can. I think if I can grow anthurium in like freaking 35% humidity, I'm pretty sure philodendron will be fine. The only reason that I have not attempted to grow my heterocraspidon outside of a greenhouse is because I, for one, just never felt like I was in a place where I needed to. It's been such a slow grower that since I've had it, it's just fit in my greenhouse and it's easier for me to like spray it and like keep the pole wet and things like that. Um, my only concern, oh my god, I'm so stuffy now because of all the dust in the air. This is not good for me. My only concern would be that because if you've owned a patriciae, you'll know that when it unfurls, since it's so long, it's not like, you know, philodendron are not like anthurium where they like emerge super teeny tiny and microscopic and then they just expand to this enormous size. They kind of emerge at a size that like, is gonna tell you how large the leaf is gonna be. So when you have these super long emergent leaves that are like a taquito wrapped up like this, and it has to like travel all the way outside of that catafil for it to drop, at the top, if it does not come out completely or if it starts to drop before it fully comes out of that catafil, oh, I'm itchy, it, it'll rip. I don't know if that makes any sense, but like right where the leaf meets the petiole where the leaf meets the petiole at the very top like right in this region if it doesn't fully come out of that cataf cataphyll sheath thing a thing it'll rip and that's been my issue with the patriciae historically i've just always had those like leaves that rip up at the top um and so usually that's fixed with a bump in humidity or just even spraying it because it's just it makes things a little bit more slippery and Kind of glides easier it's like a lube so i don't know why i'd say it like that but yeah that would be my i guess my only concern with the um heterocraspidon uh it kind of reminds me of my experience with the tortum growing in ambient conditions so so many people told me like don't even bother with your tortum in a greenhouse it goes totally fine like in my living room whatever no humidifier but I will say that every leaf, it's been growing in ambient conditions for probably like seven, eight months now, maybe even longer than that. Every new leaf that I've had has kind of ripped at the tip. It seems like it's fine unfurling throughout like 95% of the process, but in that last 5% where the tip unfurls, it gets stuck because of the low humidity and that film that gets, you know, kind of, uh, it like hardens and there's no like humidity around it to loosen it and to make it a little bit wet um, And so every time a new tortum leaf comes out now I have to be very vigilant and have to like spray it to make sure that it can have enough lubrication to unfurl so I think you know when the time comes that my Heterocraspidon can no longer live in a greenhouse. I think I'll need to treat it the way I treat my tortum out. Anywho, UPI is done on a pole. She's good to go. And I think I can, you know what, I have to, I'm just going to shove them all together because I don't want to forget to water. Uh, who's the next one we're going to do? Um, oh, let's, let's do this one. This one seems fun. Funnish. Oh, did you guys hear me crack? I have not shown this plant in a long time. This is my Ripsalis bassifera. I hope this is a bassifera. I think it's a bassifera. 
and it's finally trailing i'm so happy it's taken so long you guys oh my god the white balance is going crazy it has taken so long for this thing to start trailing because it was just kind of like this spiky thing for what felt like two years and i finally have some trailing guys so um i want to repot this just because the vessel is so bad it's so icky i can't see anything in here and it's been in this vessel for for as long as i can remember so i think it just needs a little refresh kind of want to see what the roots look like i'm sure it's fine because this thing is growing like a hot dang now but it sucks because i just freaking watered this yesterday so she's gonna be she's gonna be wet next question is gonna be a personal one thoughts on thoughts on american thanksgiving food first of all i would like to point out that i think thanksgiving is kind of doo-doo <laughs> it's kind of doo-doo if you think about it um not gonna get into the reasons why if you know you know um but honestly i have never really been a fan of american thanksgiving food luckily growing up um thanksgiving growing up in a filipino family meant just filipino food and my aunt that always threw thanksgiving dinner every year she would make ham instead of turkey because i oh my god i cannot stand the taste of turkey i just can't to me it just tastes so gamey i don't know what it is it just yeah it tastes it tastes like i'm biting directly into the uncooked turkey like into the turkey itself like a live turkey imagine a turkey just running and you just take a bite of it to me it's just there's no worse taste than than turkey sorry i don't mean to offend anyone but i cannot stand the taste of turkey the only turkey i can eat is deli turkey um and i don't know uh, the taste to me is a lot different deli turkey versus just like regular like turkey on the bone so i grew up eating ham and i love ham um glazed honey ham oh so good my family would buy these like hawaiian rolls they're like tiny little bread rolls and then you add like mayo and that's it mayo and then you add some honey ham and you make these little sammies oh my gosh they're so good but my family and i we don't celebrate thanksgiving uh, talking about my immediate family honestly i think we only celebrated thanksgiving with our extended family for all those years growing up because my parents generation they loved partying I don't, I don't mean like drinking and getting crunk like they just loved getting together and i was actually talking to my mom about this the last time i was home i was like it's kind of incredible how much you guys planned like your generation planned when we were little because me and my cousins like we cannot be bothered to plan anything like nothing and my like my parents generation they like every birthday party was like a huge thing thanksgiving fourth of july christmas eve christmas new year's new year's eve any reason oh yearly camping trip yearly crabbing trip any chance that they could celebrate something or get together and throw some kind of party they would and i'm like where did you guys get the energy like where did you me and my cousins have been saying that like we're gonna plan this cousin's camping trip we started saying this when I was like 21 years old and I am now 34. <laughs> it still hasn't happened. So, um, anywho, I really think the only reason we ever celebrated Thanksgiving was because it was just another reason to get together and eat food. But other than that, like, I can almost guarantee you that some of my, like, Filipino grandmas and aunties, they probably don't even know what Thanksgiving is. So yeah, what I think about Thanksgiving food, I'm not super into it. I did go to a friend's Thanksgiving party once where it was like very traditional stuff. Like, let me Google what like a traditional Thanksgiving dinner is. I remember the cranberry sauce. I do not like cranberry sauce. Green bean casserole. I remember it, they did have a green bean casserole. Did not like that. Mashed potato casserole. They didn't have a casserole, but they had mashed potatoes. I love mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes and gravy. Stuffing. Alice is gonna kill me when she hears this. I hate stuffing. I don't like stuffing and I don't even really like 
like homemade gravy when it tastes too much like the meat that it was cooked with not for me i much prefer the gravy in a packet that artificial gravy <laughs> the gravy you get from wendy's pies i'm not a huge pie person the only kind of pie i really like is pumpkin pie and apple pie yeah brussels sprouts it's just not for me you guys that's not for me that is just not my ideal meal but you know i didn't really grow up with that food so maybe that's why i don't know okay next question i spent way too much time on that question at what point do you move Ethereum seedlings out of greenhouse conditions okay so i actually have to get up and grab some examples for this one but i will say that I am the type of person who will wait longer to take it out of a greenhouse only because I don't feel super confident in my ability to care for such a young seedling outside. Can you stop breaking? Outside of ambient or outside of greenhouse conditions. But if you watched my collab with Amanda, who um, she, you know, she's got lots and lots of experience under her belt with growing Ethereum seedlings. She like basically takes them out as soon as they pop a leaf and to me that is crazy because i just could never i just don't think i could ever do it i'd be too scared i mean i'm sure if i tried and i really like babied it and made sure it didn't dry out and stuff like that and it was still getting like adequate light i'm sure it would be fine but like i i don't feel i feel like i wouldn't sleep well at night especially because i tend to forget things and like I'm not, I don't have a schedule with my watering and I just kind of water when I remember. So I feel like I would easily kind of forget that I've got this little tiny seedling that needs, I would say more water than the rest of my plants because it's gonna be in a much tinier pot than my other plants. My God, this Ripsalis is just dropping like a hot potato, sorry. I'm probably doing more damage than good just giving it new soil, but hopefully it appreciates me for it it's got a nice clean pot i upsized it a little bit the pot it was in was a little bit smaller than this one so i think it's i think it's gonna be okay there she is she looks great i've got some examples for you so these are my two forgetty eye oh this one's this one's dead okay well r.i.p in peace this one is very much dead. This one is good. This one's alive. It's fine. That one was kind of a weak seedling anyway. Um, so here's my forgetty eye um, that I got from Alice. Alice, Alice, <laughs> Amanda would have moved this little thing out of a greenhouse by now and I can barely keep it alive in a greenhouse. So to me, way too little to be moved out. Not only because it's in a small vessel that would just dry out completely, but I just don't think my conditions are um a good environment for such a young a young thing but i have two plants here that are at a stage where i would feel comfortable moving it out so the first one is my ace of spades carla and this one um just pushed out this new leaf so i'm just waiting for it to harden but at this size this would have been too little for me for my confidence level this size a little bit better i've moved a lot of my anthurium out at this size because i've just found that it acclimatizes better to the ambient conditions than if i moved it out when it was a little bit more mature by the way this leaf is freaking gorgina this is the first time i'm seeing it like kind of hardened off now and holy guacamole it didn't look like this a few days when i showed it to you guys there's no way holy heck okay Another example is um, my Bessier Half Lux. Look at how insane this freaking leaf is. It looks crazy. The shape of it looks crazy. It looks like a swan. It looks so funny, <laughs> just the shape of it. It's like a little, like a little cone. Um, but this is another size. Now seeing this new leaf that I would feel comfortable moving it out, but obviously I'm gonna wait until it fully hardens. This size maybe would have thought about putting it outside but still a little bit on the young side for me but looking at this leaf I think that this is a good size so this is kind of where I like to be in terms of leaf size when I'm moving out this too small too little 
Now I need to go take a picture of these and send it to my group chat because hello. Next one is this poor ballerina that is like on its last leg. Um, it's in moss and I don't even know how it's still alive in moss. But you know, where there's a will, there's a way, I guess. How did you go about quitting vaping? Are you still not vaping? So I will say that quitting my vape was harder than quitting smoking cigarettes. If you're listening, Grandpa, I'm sorry to tell you that yes, I used to smoke cigarettes and I did for a very long time. And I'm very sorry. This is a large chunk and why is it crawling? <laughs> why are you crawling? Look at him. He's crawling. I'm so far away from you guys. I'm so sorry you can't see anything. Um, I could cut it, but like, do I want to? I don't know. It's got like one tiny root. I thought it had more roots than this. I guess we can do like, so, okay, obviously this one is a anthurium. So I am going to do a little bit of tree fern fiber in here. It's really not doing jack crap in moss. So I'm just going to uh, try and root it in this tree fern fiber soil mix instead and see how she does. Um, I think at this point anything will be better than moss. Because for as long as she's been with me in my care, she should have way more roots than that. Uh, I'm going to put it in this vessel here. And I think I'm going to do Lekka down at the bottom. So anyway, yeah, quitting the vape was way harder than quitting cigarettes. And I think it's because the vape was just so accessible. And it was something that I was doing constantly throughout the day. It was so easy to just take it out, take a puff. Just do it in my house i didn't have to like go outside for a smoke you know and um it tasted good like one thing i hated like really hated about cigarettes is that there was always like a, a happy like a happy medium for me in terms of how much i could smoke at one time without feeling sick it, like the cigarette either like felt really good or it was like it just made me feel gross and then you deal with like smelling like smoke after your hands smell like smoke and I hated that because I'm very like smell averse and I think some of you guys know that about me I'm chopping this because it's too long and so when I got on the vape I was like oh my gosh this is so much better I can pick the flavors I want it smells so good and I can just do it in my house and it was just way too accessible like it's kind of scary how reliant I got on that thing it was like even before I would like fully open my eyes in the morning I was already like reaching for my vape and for me my like my wake-up call was like I couldn't even go up a flight of stairs without literally being so out of breath and it was like kind of scary how bad my breathing got and then, you know, you started seeing all these just like normal Joe Schmoes like me who are posting like videos and TikToks of like just being so sick in the hospital because of their vape. And there's so many people out there that will be like, it's not the vape and this is pushing an agenda, whatever. But I'm like, these are normal people and they're telling you that when they stopped vaping, all of these health issues just cease to exist. That's enough for me to be like, that's enough for me, just period, to be like, okay, well, I'm stopping because, yeah, my breathing was not great when I was vaping and I was just always out of breath. Physical activity was just like, good luck because, again, I couldn't freaking breathe. Um, and then just, I don't know, kind of being sort of reliant on this thing, it was like, I couldn't even go to like a social function without having to like step outside like every freaking five minutes to take a hit of my vape and I don't know I just kind of felt like it started to own me and it was cheaper than smoking cigarettes but I felt like the cost health wise was just even worse yeah I just quit I one day I was just like I'm done I don't want to do it anymore and it was hard. It still is hard. Like I have people around me who vape all the time and it's very tempting because I do miss it. I miss the feeling of it. I miss the head rush. I miss the high of it. I miss having a drink and then having like, having a little hit of nicotine. It is, 
it's undescribable <laughs> and i miss it and that's why it's been so hard because i don't miss smoking cigarettes at all i really don't but i miss having a vape it was kind of like comfort for me you know especially on like long car rides and stuff i don't know it was just something to do the habit of like doing it it just felt good and i miss it i do i miss it all the time but i feel so much better not smoking honestly like i just feel healthier overall and i am hoping to stay smoke free vape free um i i really can't see myself buying another vape and going down that road again after what it took to quit so yeah um i think the question was like how did i stop stop vaping i just threw it away honestly one day i was like i'm done um and i know that if i have it in my house i'm gonna be tempted to smoke it so i literally just i threw it away because i didn't even want the temptation i i have a very addictive personality i love my vices um, and so I've just tried to switch it to different things like now. I just always have like some kind of drink Can't always be water. It has to be some kind of thing with flavor whether it's like Sparkling water or Gatorade or orange juice ginger ale, whatever it may be um, I just like feeling like I can pick something up and get like a fix of something I don't know if that makes sense, but my recommendation would be to throw it away completely Don't just tuck it away and say i'm just going to practice self-control don't even give yourself the temptation and just think about your health because you know especially once my niece and nephew were born i'm like i want to be here to like watch them like go through things and like graduate and whatever like live their lives and i don't want to like get diagnosed with lung cancer at like 50 you know so anyway that was enough for me to quit smoking. I know it might not be enough for everyone, but that was what it did for me, or that's what it took for me. The next two that I'm gonna do, and I'm only wanting to do this right now, is because uh, Lauren's doing another live sale on Friday. Unfortunately, by the time you guys watch this, it would have already happened, but I am selling my Hoya Coriacea Green. Uh, no longer sparking joy and then I'm gonna chop this guy and propagate it for I don't know maybe the next live sale I really don't know maybe I'll just give it away but either way I need to take back my vessels and get them into new vessels so I'm gonna work on these there's gonna be sap everywhere that's one thing I really hate about chopping Hoya's art is the sap do I seem flustered today? I feel flustered. I feel like I can't like wrap my mind around where, like where to go. I feel like I'm in someone else's house. Okay, next question is, I hope you guys don't really mind a long repot and chat today. Like I said, I'm trying to hit the three hour mark if I can on this video. Um, I do maybe plan on filming tomorrow. I'm not sure if this is gonna be my last day. Cause I did want to, I'm sorry, this thing is like, blocking the whole camera i wanted to do some pole maintenance tomorrow and kind of show you how i take care of some of my big boys so yeah whatever maybe we'll continue tomorrow but anyway uh if you could only push one philodendron for people to get besides the tortum <laughs> who would it be i think it would have to be the heteroclaspidon um i think that this is just such a fun plant i i don't i don't really know if i've ever seen anyone like in like Facebook groups or whatever, say like, oh, like the heterocraspidon is overrated or I don't like the hetero. Like it's just such a cool, like a neat plant. And I would recommend getting it from a very juvenile plant. Grow it from like a stick if you can, just because the process to get from that to where it could be in its mature form, it's such a rewarding process. Like I, I know that no matter when I acquired or what maturity level I would have acquired my hetero at, I think I would appreciate it no matter what. But because I have grown it from such a juvenile thing, I just have this like appreciation for it that 
it's just so like it's so fulfilling to just see it now in its size um just knowing what it took to get there and not only that i think it's such a great plant because it's not extremely difficult i will say it's a tougher rooter but it's not like it's not like a difficult like a difficult philodendron it tends to sort of face one direction so like it's an easier plant i guess to kind of like maintain or uh keep aesthetically pleasing it has shorter internodes again this is just my experience with my uh my specimen but it's got tight inner nodes so it's not hard to like maintain or manage on a pole uh like it can it can live on like the same pole for a long time doesn't mind being root bound the leaves tend to face one way when it's growing no matter where the light is there are just like so many things about the hetero that i love i'm gonna chop off this runner because it's giving me the icaroni Icaroni pepperoni. Oh my gosh, here comes the sap. Sap central. Yeah, I just find it to be like a really uh, fun plant to grow and one that like you don't really need a ton of training and things like that for it to grow nicely. I don't know if I should like propagate this. Okay, I think I'm gonna, this looks kind of weird. So I'm gonna cut here. And then I'm going to propagate these two separately. I really don't want to be propagating more Hoya right now, but I also don't feel great about just throwing this one away, to be honest. I do feel like there will be some interest in it in a future sale, maybe. I'm just dipping it in my callusing powder, which is, uh, whatchamacall? <laughs> Hello? Uh, cinnamon, cinnamon powder, sulfur dust, rooting hormone. And then I think I can sell this one in the live sale like this. I think I'll stick to pond so that there's not a ton of shock um, for whoever's gonna buy this. I try to not like change the substrate too much when I'm repotting plants that are gonna be going to different people or that I'm gonna be selling soon because I don't want it to go through shipping shock plus, you know, substrate shock or transplant shock, whatever. So I'm just gonna be reusing this pawn. Uh, what does your hubby do for work and how is your small business doing? So Vince, um, if you guys are not aware, in Canada, it's not like the States where there's like multiple insurance companies, like car insurance companies. It is all just under the umbrella of one insurance company that's government run. Um, it's called ICBC. And he works for them. Uh, he started as, I think, his first position at ICBC was like a claims processor. So like he was like front facing with customers and would deal with like people who were in accidents. He would help them like um, resolve their claims and stuff. And then he moved up to a claims adjuster. I could be wrong, a claims adjuster. So he's the one that like goes through the accident, like the details of the accident and like helps determine how much each party is gonna get or what the coverage is gonna be, things like that. And then he moved into the cyber unit, which is basically investigating cyber fraud or insurance fraud because Guys, it's crazy. Like this blew my mind when I first moved here. There was essentially no cap on how much you could sue for in even the smallest accident. Like you would see someone get into like, just like a tap, like a fender bender, and then someone's like demanding 600K and will like sometimes would get it. Like it was freaking wild. Like he would tell me stories and I'm just like, this is insane. Like how like how so it became like a lucrative business here for people to commit insurance fraud and it became a lucrative business for the lawyers that were representing these people so um yeah they had to change it now i think there is a cap like there's a max on how much you can get in each scenario so it's like not as prevalent now people committing insurance fraud but basically when 
people were submitting these claims that like because of this accident they couldn't go to work anymore they couldn't enjoy life anymore they couldn't like do their activities anymore the cyber unit would investigate and um, i'm not going to say like the details of how hopefully it doesn't get in trouble that i'm telling you guys this but um yeah it, basically there's like a unit of icbc where they make sure that people are actually like being true to what they're saying like if they really are not going to work anymore if they really have been not able to like do their normal activities they create this whole file against them and they you know present it in court or whatever and they settle on a fee so that's what he was doing and then he moved into like the management unit of the cyber so he became a cyber manager and now he is um a business process advisor for icbc so i don't really know exactly what that entails but like he's working like higher level of corporate like deciding kind of like operations almost so yeah that's what he does um he's very good at his job he enjoys it i can tell he enjoys the work and then for me if you guys didn't know i have a small business called free pancakes a children's brand and I make homeschool activities and supplementary curriculum for homeschool curriculum. And um, it was really fulfilling work. I was super, super into it for the first few years, but I dealt with a lot of snarky people in the industry, people who were blatantly copying our branding, our work, our activities larger companies so basically if you like looked at both of our stuff together it was like i would look like i'm the one copying because they're bigger and there was a lot of like sort of passive aggressive drama that way and it really discouraged me and not only that i feel like i don't i've never really fit in or vibed with the homeschool community because if you guys think of me and my personality and just how I am, it's so opposite of what the homeschool community is like. Like, um, I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying like, I've never really felt like I had a place, like I fit in. The business did fine, um, or is doing fine, but just me personally, in terms of like immersing myself in the community, it's not like me in the plant community where I feel like I've found my people, I can be myself. I totally have to put on a face and a personality when I'm, working that business yeah it's like you know a lot of people who homeschool are very like super super religious whereas i'm not um it's just stuff like that like i think some of you guys might know what i'm talking about but i just don't i just ugh, i just don't vibe with a lot of people in that in that world and yeah so that's i think that's why i've never kind of not made it my personality but i've never been able to see myself in it long term like i can with plants so when plants became kind of a lucrative thing for me in terms of youtube i really put my uh my effort into that and it's paid off for sure but i do want to i guess find my passion again with my business because especially now with like Millie at the age where she can actually use the materials that I'm making, it's like, it's kind of reignited this, <laughs> ah, no, this flame in me to make more materials and, you know, make new stuff. Sorry, the dust in the air is really like torturing me. So anyway, long story short, yes, the business is doing fine. It's not like gonna retire me it's making uh, enough for me to like pay some of my bills but i guess right now my bread and butter is plants because i've put all of my energy towards it in the last three years and my business has taken a back seat but i think it's because of the nature of where my business is at right now it's all digital products i'm not shipping anything physical so it's like people just buy the digital products and it just runs itself all i have to do is answer emails sometimes and make new stuff so that's that i think i'll eventually get back there but i just don't feel connected to that community or that industry at all um not like i do with the plant world cut my throat <laughs> next question is which types of plants like to be snug in their pots and which ones will decline i 
feel like a lot of people will probably have differing opinions on this on this answer but if i had to answer personally i'm gonna say philodendron don't mind being snug in their pots alocasia i would say love being snug into the snug in their pots to a certain extent monsteras maybe epipremnum to a certain extent. I feel like those plants still are able to size up um, when it has a like a really root bound pot. Whereas with Anthurium, um, they definitely size up better with a larger pot. Anthurium can grow in smaller pots, but you're not gonna see as vigorous of growth as you would if you allowed them to kind of like stretch their legs a little bit. Hoyas, to a certain extent, like to be snug in their pot, but I will say that it's a, for some reason, I don't know what it is about Hoya roots, but it's a nightmare to untangle a, uh, a Hoya that's like root bound in whatever. Oh my God, especially moss. I hope to never have to <laughs> wrestle with a Hoya in moss, Hoya roots in moss ever again. But for this question specifically, the one that stands out to me the most, I think for sure are Monsteras and Alocasia. Alocasia for me, like they can size up pretty well in um, root bound vessels, but I feel like when you do upsize it, the shock, like the shock is just so much worse than if you were to upsize it a little bit sooner before it got root bound. And then you guys know how delicate alocasia roots are. It can be such a freaking nightmare. I'm just potting it in this old cup. I can't be bothered. It's just sitting in my plant room. It's not in my my living room. I don't care. I just want it to have a bigger vessel and I don't really want to sacrifice some of my nicer ones just for this little guy. Yeah, that's all I have to say about um, that please update your vlog channel oh my gosh you guys i already have i have a video i've had a video filmed for my vlog channel for weeks and it was the setup of my office space in my plant room and um i just never posted it well not that i've never i never edited it like i need to edit it first but i feel like i've been just playing catch up on my plant channel and it's just so hard for me to like sit down and be like okay i'm gonna work on a video for my vlog but i'm hoping to get one up by next month <laughs> oh boy i want to do like a not a christmas vlog but like a december i want to do a december vlog december household favorites video and then get this freaking office video up sometime but if I can get three videos up in December, that would be awesome. Again, I just, I have to get caught up on this channel first. It's like the two videos a week. They're killing me. I was able to keep a good schedule before with my vlog because I was filmed far enough in advance on this channel where I could spend the time to film and edit vlogs. But then these trips to California just really, really, they set me back so much. So yeah, I, it's been a game of catch up ever since the summer, honestly. I haven't been able to kind of like really get ahead. So here is my Euph Euphorbia, what? <laughs> my Hoya Velosa. It's uh, upsized now, chopped down. I'm hoping the new growth doesn't push out another long runner. I'm kind of hoping for some bushy growth action. Okay, um, I'm gonna do this. So these are the El Choco reds that I was showing you guys the other day. Um, I'm gonna ask Lauren if she thinks that these should be freebies or if I should try and sell them. I'm not really sure at this point, but I'm gonna pot them up for whatever scenario we have. And since it's in moss, I'm just gonna move it to um, soil. And I'm just gonna move each of them into these little cups and I'll probably dome them because I don't want them to go into shock. Next question. Um, how do you avoid edema in no drainage? Am I watering too much or not chunky enough substrate? If you guys don't know what edema is, <laughs> Pudge, I don't know why he's barking. Um, if you guys don't know what edema is, it's basically when like the cells burst in the tissue of your plant and it presents in like these weird sort of like spots all over the leaves. I think it only presents as spots. I, I can't remember if it presents any other way. 
Coach is very upset. Um, so my recommendation, um, I do deal with edema sometimes, um, but not, not a lot anymore. Um, and I don't really find a difference if it's in drainage versus no drainage. Like I still deal with edema and, um, what's that called? Gutation. Like when you see like water being pushed out the edges of the leaves um, of your plant or like you can see that some part of the leaf goes translucent. I still deal with that regardless if it's in drainage or no drainage. Uh, there's really no like cosmetic damage that I can recall that I get from um, uh, from gutation but edema definitely leaves a scar. So my recommendation is um, I think I got all of them. My recommendation would be to water either in the late morning or early afternoon. Try and avoid nighttime waterings. Water slowly. I think um, sometimes when you just kind of like blast your your um, plants with water, it kind of just like it's it's kind of like it like drowns. Not not actually drowns, but like it's just like this shock of water. Whereas if you like think about like in the rainforest, you know, it's yes, it rains very hard and very often, but it's not like just like a waterfall of water, like just drowning them. It's it's going to come in trickles and in, in raindrops, right? Yeah, if you can water slowly. I've also found that bottom bottom watering helps, except obviously if you're doing no drainage, then that doesn't really work. But Another thing you can do if you want to try bottom watering with no drainage, I'm like on the side. If you want to try bottom watering and no drainage, you can um, water on the side. I tend to not advise people to water like this because I like to water evenly across the substrate. But if you want to bottom water and you have roots that are already at the bottom, you can literally just pour water to one side and let it sit at the bottom and then it'll wake itself up. So you can try that too. And then another thing that you can try, this doesn't really work for me because I, I can't really afford to be watering often, but if you water less, but more frequently, meaning not giving your plant sort of like that full amount of water that you normally would give it. So give it less water, but you're gonna have to water more often. Yeah, that's really all, that's really all I have to say. But I think to some extent, edema is kind of just like a natural process and it just happens. Um, and for me, I've never found edema to be something that's just like life-threatening to the plant. It's always something that just like, you know, you deal with the cosmetic damage, which kind of sucks. And it, and cosmetic things are really important to some people. Whereas for me, I'm like, you know what? I can deal, I can deal with a little cosmetic damage. I think we're gonna be okay. I think after this, I think I'm gonna cut it. I think we're gonna stop the, uh, q a here i still have so many more questions which i think i can use for a future repot because i want to do another repot and chat in a few weeks so i'll save it for that but um we'll maybe go through like two more questions do you have a set cleaning routine i'd love to have one but i just do as i remember um i don't really have a cleaning routine i hope you're talking about like around the house and not with plants i don't really have a set cleaning routine but i do have things that I do try and schedule. So like without fail every week, it has to get done every Friday, I do my laundry. And when I do my laundry, I mean like I do the laundry, I fold it and I make sure it's put away all on the same day. It's just a weird thing that I just, I have to get done. My husband and I try to not go to sleep with dishes in the sink. So whether that be like before we go to bed, we handle the dishes. That's something that usually has to get done because I don't like waking up to a sink full of dishes. I vacuum pretty regularly because of all the hair that I shed, that Vince sheds on his freaking beard. And then Pudge, like Pudge's fur. But I do sort of like a deep vacuum um, once a week and that usually happens on Sundays. I used to be really good about doing the deep vacuum plus a uh, mop of the floor or like a steam clean of the floor every week. But one day I just got lazy and was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm 
No one comes over. No one sees my floors. So it's just going to be dirty. And I always warn Alice every time she comes over, I'm like, I didn't clean my floors. So you're just going to have to deal with it. And every time she's like, I don't know why you keep telling me this. Like, I care. I think the way that I just kind of like navigate life and keeping my space as clean as possible is that every day I just try and do like a tidy whether that be something I just see off the bat like oh my gosh my couch needs to be like wiped down or like the baseboards are dusty like those are things where like if I see it I'll do it but I don't like really schedule it in but in terms of just like maintenance of the house like I'll make sure that like the dining table gets wiped down every day the counters get wiped down every day I usually try and like wipe down the appliances every few days so I don't know it's it's kind of just become a habit for me because I'm so like neurotic about like mess in my space and um, yeah there's only certain things that I have to like schedule in like laundry and I just like knowing that it gets done on a certain day honestly mostly it's just I do things not as I remember but just as I see it but I, I almost I almost feel like that like contributes to my ADHD too because I'm always so I'm always I'm always thinking about the mess in my space and so if I'm in the middle of doing something like filming or cooking or whatever I might be doing if I just see something that needs to get cleaned I will drop everything on a dime and start cleaning that but that's how sometimes like I'll have so much chaos in the house because I've started like six different things and I haven't finished anything I've learned to get better about that and now I have like post-its. I've talked about this in my ADHD video, but I just have post-its everywhere now where I like write things down to like remember to do it instead of just like trying to do it in that moment so that I can actually finish projects when I start them. So it's gotten better, but it's taken, it's taken a lot of practice. But I will say that I don't, like as much as I love having a clean space, obviously, I really don't love how fixated I get on the mess in my house. I really don't. Um, it's Sometimes it can be crippling where like I can't even enjoy my day or enjoy a weekend or enjoy a day off because all I'm doing is fixating on things that need to be cleaned in the house. And I don't know. Um, I always tell Vince like I feel like one day I'm going to regret the day that we have to move out of this building and I'm going to say... I wish there were more days where I just spent it enjoying the space, enjoying the view, enjoying, just enjoying it overall instead of just constantly trying to like clean it and be productive and do things around the house. Um, so yeah, I've, I've really actively tried lately, probably over the last three months or so. Like if I've been on my computer all day or if I've, I've like finished a project, I have to get out of that mindset of like, okay, on to the next thing to be productive and to make money. Like I allow myself to just like make a snack and like sit down and watch TV. Um, or I'll just like pop in my headphones, listen to a podcast and just like bake like banana bread or something. Like do something that's like just chill and like not cleaning, not organizing. Um, but yeah but unfortunately i do spend a lot of my time sort of fixating on it and uh again it's really nice having a really clean organized house but even like but by standards i still feel like this place is a freaking wreck and i know it's not i know it's not to like if someone came in here they wouldn't think like oh my gosh like this place needs so much work but for me i look at it and i'm just like stressed it's like a sickness. It really is. I hate it. I, I wish I wish I could dial it down a little bit. I like that I am so on top of chores and cleaning and stuff like that, but I wish it was just a little bit less intense. I wish I could just kind of chill out a little bit, you know, and not be so neurotic about everything. So anyway, wow. That was... I went off on a tangent, didn't I? So now that I'm onto my last plant and I want to like tidy up in here before I gotta film again tomorrow, um, let's answer one more question. 
So this one is, what is the best plant supplement slash fertilizer that you've used? Whew, that's a hard one. It's a hard one, you guys. Uh, I talked about this in my gimmicky plant video, gimmicky plant things video, where I was saying that like a lot of the fertilizers you're gonna see on the market like kind of do the same thing. There's nothing like super duper duper special about any particular one. I think you just kind of have to find the, uh, you just have to find the one that, that works for you and that you like. So for me, I've really liked using TPS1. Um, I've been using it for more than a year now. Has it been two years now? Hmm. I don't know how long it's been, but it's definitely been over a year. And I will say that I don't know if it, it's a testament to the fertilizer or a testament to just having another year of plant care under my belt. But the growth that I've seen on my plants this year alone has been just exponential in terms of years prior uh but i will say that your fertilizer it's not it's not gonna make a humongous difference in the health of your plants like i could use probably like a fertilizer from wherever schultz get it from you know um the nursery down the street and i'm probably gonna see similar results just because my plant care is a lot different now. Um, I think a lot of people equate either fancy, expensive fertilizers to healthier plants or more fertilizer with healthier plants. Um, there's a saying that has floated around with botanists that I've heard and it says, well, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen because if I just say it, it's not gonna make sense. Water weekly, weekly. So water weekly, weekly. Using a diluted fertilizer, I think the recommended is 20% of what the bottle says on a weekly basis is what is going to help your plant grow overall. Cause I think um, there's a misconception that people think like, oh, I'm just gonna like dump it with all this fertilizer and it's gonna get so big. Like your plant is only going to be able to absorb so many nutrients at once. You can experience nutrient burn, fertilizer burn. Um, so I think if you find a fertilizer you like, just stick with it. Stick with it and use it at a diluted amount weekly. Um, and I recommend this for all plants that are growing. I wouldn't fertilize weekly on a dormant plant. I would definitely only do it for plants that are currently pushing out new growth. Um, so for me, my supplement of choice, like if I could only have one supplement to use, I think it would just be my, my TPS1. Um, I am using things like CalMag, Silica, uh, Soil Enhancer, which has like uh, beneficial bacteria and things like that. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of things, but I think honestly, like I could do without the other things. Those are kind of just like extra. I think if just I could use TPS1, uh, it would be fine. Because if you think about plants in the wild, they're not getting these fancy, you know, concocted fertilizers. They're getting minerals from the air, from the water, dirt. And uh, yeah, just I, I feel like sometimes less is more. But I don't know, it's fun to use like different <laughs> things. and. You know, you act like you're like a making like a witch's brew and stuff. And I do think that some of my plants have definitely benefited from some of these extra supplements that we're using. But yeah, again, if I can only pick one, it's gonna be the TPS1 fertilizer. All right, guys. So um, I think I'm gonna cut it here for week of for today. As much as I really don't wanna film tomorrow, I think I at least wanna just kind of take you with me when I do some pole maintenance because I am overdue for that. I haven't given my Glorious a, uh, a shower in two weeks and she's probably looking at me like, okay lady, where's my weekly shower? Cause I'm princess. And then I'm, I have to do pole maintenance, meaning like back here there's like, ugh, my M Majestic has run out of substrate, my Esmeralda dents, like things just need to be refilled um, fertilized and things like that. So it'll be, it'll, I think it'll be a quick day tomorrow, but that's where we will cut it. 
But anyway, yeah, I'll see you in a bit. Sorry, why did I scare you? One more thing, I was just cleaning up and um, I totally forgot to tell you guys that, um, so this is my merch. If you guys didn't know, this is my merch from Halloween. But I just released, uh, for how many? Monstera, Anthurium, Philodendron, Eraceae. Monstera, Anthurium, Philodendron, Monstera, Eraceae. I think I released four new styles. Four new styles in a bunch of different SKUs. Um, I'll throw up a screenshot here of some of the new stuff that I've got up. And um, yeah, it seems to have good feedback so far. I ordered the Philodendron sweater myself. Um, I think eventually I'll get one of the Varsity tees, maybe the one that says Eraceae, because I really don't want to have to pick between Monstera and Philodendron, or Monstera and Anthurium. So I think I'm just gonna get the Eraceae ones. But anyway, if you need like a Christmas gift or gift for yourself. Um, yeah, I updated the shop. So um, give that a gander and I will see you tomorrow. Okay, so my hair looks lopsided as heck. You know when your bun is kind of like more on one side than the other? Nothing drives me more crazy. So anyway, I just found I just finished wrapping, filming another video, jumping straight back into week of, but I have a FaceTime call meeting <laughs> date with um, Alice and Amanda right now. Actually, I'm actually like five minutes late. So I'll let you guys say hi to them. I'm gonna chat with them probably for like half an hour or so. Anywho, oh my gosh, this is the first time you guys are gonna see Amanda in the flesh, kind of. Let's get you set up here so you can see my phone. <laughs> oh, so much better. I think the ears are too small. I'm not talking to anyone. What? I'm gonna have to hold you guys up like this. How are you time? filming this? Huh? How are you filming this? You're filming this right now? Yeah. You're. Oh, I thought you were gonna try and film the screen. That's what I thought oh, you guys no. were doing, and I was like, oh, hell no, this is I just want, be done. I just want the audio close enough to the camera. I'm filming. Hi. Hi. I just wanted you guys to say hi to week of, and then I'm gonna stop filming. <laughs> Oh, this okay. is Amanda in the flesh. Hi. You guys know Amanda. Good. I know. I love your curly hair. It's so cute. No, it's kind of straight today. No, it's so curly. Oh my god, she's chopping the tree. She's chopping the tree. It's huge. Wait, what happened? Okay. I can't see my screen. Oh wait, let me see. It's so okay. weird. It's just following you. Hi. It's so yeah. cute. It's just really trippy. <laughs> With the kitty. Oh my god, look at that. Okay, you guys gotta see the tree. Okay. Oh, oh, can you see the curvy squirt? Oh, no, it's. There we go. That's insane. <laughs> She's got a little curve. She's chopping okay. this, this elbow finally. Yeah. Let's just do it here. It's humongous. Like a chef's knife. <laughs> Oh Hi. my gosh. <laughs> this is my last hole. <laughs> Fancy. OMG. We were on that call for two and a half hours. I thought it was gonna be like a 30 minute to an hour long FaceTime, but we just keep blabbing and blabbing. So anywho, oh my neck hurts. Um, yeah, two and a half hours later, I can finally get started on what I'm doing for week of. So. Like I said, today we're doing pole maintenance. I'm not gonna be doing, there's something wet on the floor. Um, I'm not gonna be doing pole maintenance on all of my plants with poles. There's just one, two, three, four here that I want to address today. My Florida Beauty was gonna be one of them that I do, but I'm saving that for a separate video because I'm gonna be chopping this thing up. She's being hacked into little pieces it's getting too big if i extend the pole it's not gonna be able to fit in this exo anymore and that i just won't have it so i'm going to show you who we're going to be handling today so the first one is going to be oh my god the background is so bright like this white balance is just not it it's really not it's not wonderful but it's better and i can brighten my ring light sorry just trying to figure things out here okay so the first one is gonna be my Epipremnum Panatum, Alba Variegata. You guys, this stem is getting aggressive. She's actually pushing 
like indenting my pole <laughs> because of the pressure. Um, and obviously it's at the top of the pole. I don't really want to chop this. So um, I'm gonna just be extending it. I'm gonna add a second one on. I've got a new leaf here. And uh, yeah, that one should be easy peasy. Next one is my, I think this is a, I haven't talked about this plant in a while. My philodendron esmeral, esmeralda? Philodendron esmeralda, is that what this plant is? I can't remember. This one is getting quite large too, has an, a new leaf on the way. It is starting to um, outgrow how much substrate I have in here. So this one just needs to be filled. I'm also gonna be chucking all of these in the shower after they're extended and filled so that I can super, super wet the pole. And I'm also gonna be fertilizing the poles. The other one that I'm doing is this Escaletto that is getting so big. This is the largest emergent leaf I have ever seen on this plant. And the, the leaf expands so much once it's fully unfurled. So I am curious to see how big it's gonna be because this leaf here is already like ginormous. It doesn't look ginormous on, on camera, but like it's big. This one is also on the world's tiniest pole. It's also starting to push back on it. Um, I can see some aerial roots really starting to form. So I'm just going to be adding on to here. I don't wanna chop this one at all. And then the last one I'm gonna be doing is my Majestic. This one really hasn't wanted to size up um, at all and I really think it's just because I've been neglecting it. It probably needs a repot It's so dry. I don't remember the last time I gave this like a proper fertiliz fertilization it does have a new leaf on the way though, but um, You can see that it is clearly outgrowing this pole. So I just need to get things back in order I'm gonna set up my square mat and I think um, for pretty much everything besides Everything besides my elbow epi, I might have to do it on the floor, but we'll see. But it's just filling holes is so messy. And I honestly hate doing it. I don't mind climbing plants. Like, I don't mind fertilizing poles and wet, keeping poles wet and things like that. But extending poles is like the bane of my existence. I hate it. So let me move you back. Hopefully you can see, but here's my mix. It's a mixture of tree fern fiber, super chopped up moss, perlite, and just like bits of this and that. I just throw in like random pieces of LECA and pawn in here. So it's just, yeah, a mixture of everything. But I find that this mix does really well for my poles. So we're gonna stick to it. I think the best way to do this is to fill it first fill first and then assemble oh my god i have a headache i think my hair is too tight my bun i feel like i need to schedule a haircut soon i think i want to cut my hair back to above my shoulders um the only thing is, is like after i cut my hair above my shoulders i only wore it down once and then the rest of the time I had it up. I just think I feel, like I feel weird with my hair down. I don't feel like myself. I feel like I look strange. And I'm just not the type that's gonna wanna like style it all the time, you know? Like, like I'll admit when my, hair, my, when my hair is cut and it's styled, it looks fine. I actually enjoy it. I did one video with my hair down and most of the comments were just talking about my hair. But again, I'm not gonna spend the time to style it like that every single time I'm gonna get in front of the camera or leave the house. It's so much easier for me to just throw it into a bun. And I just like that it's not touching my neck. I don't like anything touching my face. I'm just like weird about stuff like that. So at least if I cut my hair, um, my buns will be smaller and they'll be lighter because I do think that like the weight of my buns definitely contribute to my headaches. But ugh, it's just scheduling an appointment and actually going. <laughs> I was like, should I just try and cut my hair by myself or like ask Alice to do it for me? But I also feel like that might be a disaster. So maybe I don't do that. Oh. Oh no, some of these holes lately have just been 
they've been fighting back. What the? Like usually I have no problem assembling poles whatsoever. But like I feel like <laughs> this week it's just, they're just not wanting to cooperate with me. That's good. I don't wanna pack it too tight. Also, um, you'll notice that the original pole on here is like that sort of milky white. And this one is the, soup, the translucent clear. I need a bamboo stick. And I really, I don't care about the aesthetic of that because it's just sitting in my, um, my plant room anyway. I'm just gonna chop this at an angle. Anyone know where it went? I'll find it, or my foot will find it anyway. Oh gosh. Oh, I hate this. So that is extended. She's good. Hopefully I didn't damage this new leaf too much. I bent the shit out of the petiole. Now I don't know if I'm gonna have to get on the floor for this, these next ones, cause they're bigger. But I really don't want to have to. I really, I really don't want to have to. I really don't, why does that sound weird? I really don't want to. Okay, I'm gonna fill some of this because I think that was the issue last time. There just wasn't enough in the top here. And then I had to push it down. Whoa, -ho, Merry Christmas. Don't look at my armpit, people. It's winter, I'm only waxing once a month now. We're doing the bare minimum here. I don't like how this is freaking leaning. By the way, if you guys are Apple TV Plus subscribers, I highly recommend watching um, Monarch. It's about monsters. It's about like Godzilla, King Kong, that whole, that whole universe. I find it very interesting. I am enjoying it thoroughly so far. Um, so if you're looking for a new recommendation, a new show recommendation, I hate this. We don't have to make this difficult. Let's just go nice and easy. Nice and easy. I feel like I don't even need these freaking legs because I already have a bamboo stick in there. Okay, you know what? Where's my scissor? Oh, I'm chopping the legs off because they're just getting in my way. That one was a way better process than what I did with <laughs> a few from them. Okay, I don't think we need any more Hugo's tape because she is gonna attach with a quickness, I'm pretty sure. She is extended. Hopefully everything still fits in um, the XOs they're supposed to go in. Okay, this one is easier than the Majestic because I'm just filling um <laughs> i'm flustered these ones are way easier to fill because the hole is bigger that's what he said I actually think there might be some soil in here too because it's kind of gritty. I think some of it is probably dust from the perlite, but I'm pretty sure there's probably soil in here and not just tree fern fiber like I thought. Don't spill. Oh my gosh, my head, you guys, is throbbing. I think that's good. I don't want it to be too much. Um, it is leaning and it's kind of triggering me a little bit, so I'm gonna add another bamboo steak this thing is going to go flying again. Good enough for me. And now it is way more stable in here. So that one's good. And now we have to do this majestic, which I really don't want to extend, but I think I have to. 
I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to do the bamboo steak thing in here too, except it is difficult because it's in pawn and it's kind of hard to wedge the bamboo stick in there. But I'm gonna try because I, I just don't think this is gonna hold up. I feel like this is bigger, dude. Crap. I thought it was the same size. No, I think it is the same size. No, it's not. Can I squeeze it? I'm gonna make it the same size. Ah! Okay, that was the messiest project I have ever done. And I hope to never have to extend a pole ever again. But I literally jam-packed this bigger pole into a smaller pole and I do not recommend it at all. Not in the slightest, I need to stabilize the base. She's a little crooked and it's kind of ugly, but again, I care less about the things in my plant room than the stuff that is out in the living room. But I'm just taking some Hugo's amazing tape and I'm gonna just strap up this, this node, this top node, so that it actually roots into it and it's bulging so much cause it's like muffin topping out of here. But I don't have another one of this, of this size. So that's just gonna have to do. Nobody will see it, hopefully. And then I feel like I could even cover another node. I'll cover the node below it because once this outgrows this top hole, then it's going to be getting a chop. And so I would love to have as many roots in this pole as possible. Oh, I cut it just too short. I'm gonna have to figure out the lighting in here cause like I cannot stand, I cannot stand when it gets blown out. And I know other YouTubers who use this same camera that I have, we all, like I observe it in their videos that the same thing happens. But I need to figure it out because I'm just, I'm over it. Okay, so um, the next thing I'm gonna do is carry these to the bathroom and just hope and <laughs> pray that I don't make a trail of mess on the way. That's one thing I hate about bringing my pole plants to the tub is um, the spillage from poles. But I just wanna get everything like really nice and wet. I wanna give it a good water. And then um, I'm gonna fertilize it, but I'll fertilize it off camera. I just wanna kinda show you what it looks like when it's in the bath. Right, guys well that is it it has been one heck of a week of i feel like i got a lot done this week despite my very very low energy levels i'm kind of glad i sort of picked it back up in the last two days but this is a lesson learned that whenever i'm having a sleep deprived week i am not filming week of because that was just way too much but i'm glad everything that got done got done my living room feels great i love it in there this work in progress not looking not looking beautiful but i'm glad the shelf is installed i'm glad the red is out of here glad the tent is situated it's funny while i was on the um facetime call with amanda and alice i was like showing them some of the anthurium in the tent and amanda was like what are the anthurium doing in your tent i was like listen i can explain i can explain but honestly um those are really only going to be in there probably for another month max a lot of them and then they're gonna move out into the living room. Um, so anyway, that's gonna be it. I'm wrapping it up. I think I've hit the three hour mark now. 
probably well over three hours. I hope you guys enjoyed this week of. Don't forget to check out the new merch if you're looking for some planty gifts this Christmas. What else do I want to tell you? I think that's it. So thank you for being here for another week of. Please don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you liked it, and I will see you in the next one.